Olá. Muito bom dia. Hello, Sejam good todos morning. Muito you are muito welcome. Aqui ao Centro Here to the Centro Internacional de Convenção de Araraquara. I am Daniela Lemus and I'm going to be here this whole day with you in this international symposium about the new citriculture production system and the automation of citrus. This meeting is done by the Fonda Citrus and in partnership with the Spanish group Agromilora and also with Embrapa. During this day, we're going to have important meetings with specialists and researchers of many countries. People who are really important for the sector, bringing lots of important information, lots of exchange of knowledge for all of us who are going to be here this whole day. At a hold are going to be 11 speeches. These speeches will be divided into two panels. At the end of each module, each panel, we're going to have a round table to be able to discuss the themes that are being brought here by the speakers. The main goal of the symposium is exactly that, potentialize the discussions about the most current advancements of citriculture, challenges and innovative trends of automation and uh, production of citrus. Opening our symposium, I would like to invite here the president of Fonte Citrus, Dr. Lorival Carmo Monaco, who's going to be talking to us, who's going to open up this event. Dr. Monaco, please. It's a pleasure seeing you again, Dr. Monaco. I am very good. Feel free. Good morning, everyone. I'd like to bring you a challenge of who has followed the citric culture and agriculture along many years. This shows me, first of all, that citriculture faced many steps and many difficulties in the world, but it has it is still being the most productive and the data that were collected of course show that with all the difficulties we have grown all the productivity of course not every time the profitability but it followed up i would like to use this moment to say that this event which was sponsored by Fonde Citrus and Milhora it's extremely important. We are in a challenge uh, moment, and science has evolved a lot. And not always we are using all the opportunities. And the Japanese people who are using a great quality program, they have the Kaizen, which is what we have done. We have improved the production and competitivity and safety of the worker, the advantage of, to the producer, but there's a stage in which the individual gains are not enough anymore. So it is important to change technology. And what they call the Kaizen, they start calling something Takiku, which is the, ch the change. And this is the aspect for us, which is extremely important, stimulated by a new factor. Brilliant. Greening. Greening, of course, will change the technology, will change the habits. Our, our orchards do not allow, uh, which not allow adequate production, our machinery that does not allow to go, to go in a very close place dropping all the fruits and especially the mechanization of, of the crop. There are many necessary changes that we have, we will have a new citric culture and this is a challenge not only to the producer but for the technicians as well of being able to use the, the knowledge of uh, genetics, engineer, molecular engineering, 
and uh, in artificial intelligence for us to be able, in fact, to preserve the, the citriculture, Brazilian citriculture and from Sao Paulo state in a stage where everyone's going to be satisfied. This event, of course, shows that. We hope that through this discussion, we can run away a little bit of the notion of the technical, of the agronomist, of, because this has already been done and it didn't work. So we need to look for what is going to work, and these are radical changes. That's the reason it is called Citriculture 4.0. I wish you success, and I hope that you we can get set up a structure that will give citric culture characteristic that it has and what it has produced during the years bringing generating uh, jobs valuing the economy of many cities and more than that giving even more safety and getting this attending this uh, this things we are talking this is easy to to identify but the market has changed a lot and we also have to change together with the market. So let's get concerned with all these aspects and not modifying anyone, but always with the economical, financial sector, social as well, and in fact, preserving environment. Thank you so much. Muito obrigada, Dr. Monaco, pelas palavras. Thank you so much, Dr. Monaco, for the words. And here, with such a big joy, we will call out and thank the presence of the Subsecretary of Agriculture, Orlando Melo de Castro, of the Agriculture Secretariat. And and feeling the the in the state of São Paulo, please come here to share with us this moment. Obrigado. Thank you so much. It is a satisfaction. Good morning to everyone. A special good morning for the citricultures and all the technicians, the producers of citrus, and the Melito in this area uh, guiding, transferring knowledge to the producers, to the technicians from Katia's uh, technical assistants and technicians of the agriculture advisory you have i you have my greetings and also from the governor tarcísio de freita the secretary would like to be here he would need to be in brazil tomorrow looking for uh, resources of work he has a, a meeting there and of course the subject citrus is there on the script our concern in the secretary, which lives the citriculture here, said by Dr. Lorival Monaco, and Dr. Monaco, who I met in my when I was working as a agronomic agronomic engineering, a lot younger, right, Dr. Monaco? There, I started my career and I retired. I would like to say that the situation of the citrus uh, sat here with the greening issue, especially, that will be one for us to embed all the corporations that are going to be discussed here. We cannot allow that the citric culture of Sao Paulo goes through the situation that many other countries live, such as uh, U.S. and the Florida State, which produces about 20% of what they produced in the 90s. And here I'd like to highlight the article of Juliano Aires, the first of this month in the Jor Journal of Sao Paulo. It is an amazing reflection. And you had already put our governor in an audience of the sector, it was a new thing, and the governor opened up the doors of his office to listen to the sector and difficulties we have lived in the citriculture of Sao Paulo with the greening. We have treated the second the second most important item of the citriculture in Sao Paulo. 
losing only for sugar cane. There are billions of dollars of revenue, and we will attack this problem. It's gonna win, not gonna win us. We will be stronger. So the secretary are taking attitudes from that moment when the governor created a workforce to establish the guidelines of action, not only in Sao Paulo state, but in, the, in generally, we're going to work on the researches. We will sum up the, the efforts. Sao Paulo has the biggest environment of research regarding citric culture in EAC. With, with more than 90 years, we have the biological studies, who, which was anniversary yesterday. We had Fundici, three universities. It is impossible in the sum not having any solution. We won't have a, a bullet gum for us, a silver bullet, but we are going to work on the management of the selenium vector management of bacteria in adequate uh, management using the adequate tools we will be able to work many things will be done there is a new resolution coming up bet between the semil and agriculture secretariat authorizing cda and identifying orchards which are uh, abundant uh, under risk and we will need to sum up efforts with the Mayor, mayor houses that last year they received lots of equipments of uh, carriers trucks to sum up efforts in these works to minimize the cost of those actions which will be done the burn of the abandoned orchards and creating a system for us for the interested people to see critical areas or which are abandoned they can um, call places to talk about that for us to have a quick action on that we cannot allow that the sources of diseases will be keeping distributing all these pests. And also we have an action in that small orchards, sometimes uh, domestic and f little farms. We have to control that. It's a, a war operation. We cannot allow these orchards of 40% which are contaminated. They can contaminate the rest of the Paulista citric culture. These are a state action, but the state alone doesn't win. We have to sum efforts, together efforts in the public sector, private producers, technicians, the assistance area for this to be controlled and minima minimized. We're not going to allow this disease to win us. The economy, the, the jobs of the state are under risk, and we will only win if everybody who are here and the ones who were not able to come here but are involved somehow with the citric culture, some efforts, gather efforts to win. Only this way we can embed in the future the innovations and technologies which will be presented and discussed here today. If, if not, it's not going to be only a dream. I hope you have a good day and you live here bigger than what you came. You're right. Thank you so much. Secretary, thank you so much. We are very happy of having you here. This way, I will ask you to send a hug for the agriculture and supply. Secretariat and the governor of Sao Paulo, Tarcísio de Freitas, thank you so much. Now, I will call here to the stage the general manager of Fundo Citrus, Juliano Aires, who, which... This moment, Juliana, is very important for citric culture, right? A symposium such as this is a great opportunity of changing information, experience, and evolving as professionals, research, researchers, and specialists, right? Thank you, Daniela. Thank you, all the citric culture producers in the industry, in the market. It is a big pleasure to be here. I would like to thank the Agriculture Secretariat who started work recently, Dr. Guilherme Biai and Governor, Governor and Dr. are here present 
uh, representing Embrapa, and they are supporting the event, participating here, uh, Gromilora, and all of you. I'm going to be straight ahead saying that this event has two main core goals. This, the first one is saying what will come further. The citric culture and agriculture has changed a lot. So we are trying to bring today for uh, uh, demand of the citric culture producers, which is y y new in the, in the world according to technology, since the pruning, pulverizers, and cropping, semi-mechanical and mechanical, for what is coming ahead. Together with that, the theme of greening is going to be approached, and we will contextualize this with inside this new scenario, how we imagine the citric culture will be. Where did we live and where are we going to? This is one of the main goals. We will have lectures which will last about 30 minutes. Some, ones, some people have 40 minutes, but every time they have a time for discussion. But we will enjoy, enjoy a lot and we will be rigorous with time. And we're going to be here uh, talking about that and God bless you. Thank you so much, Juliano. So he, he will be back here to talk to us. But before, I would like to give you some messages that are important before we really start. The event counts on simultaneous translations. In case you haven't got the headphones, they are in the hall to be able to follow the interpretation. In the end, you have to give the headphones back, and uh, if you need to take them, you have to take your ID with you. Channel 1 is the interpretation into Portuguese, and in Channel 2, English, and Channel 3, translation into Spanish. The program for the symposium was given with the badge. The building where we are here has seven emergency exits. Three of them are in the entrance and the, uh, the four other ones are here on the sides of our auditorium. We have a fire guard here available to support whatever is necessary. Your QR code that uh, will be on our screen is the channel to have access to the WhatsApp communication where you will send the, the questions to our speakers. The number is 1699-629-4271. Through this channel, you send the questions to the speakers who will be here with us all day long. You just have to point your cell phone to the QR code. There will be a click, a link. You click on the link and you will have access to this communication channel. Don't forget, please, to send with your question your name so this way we can identify you. If there are questions, there is a staff here who will be able to help you with whatever you need. Now I'll call again Juliano Aires, who is the general director of Fundi Citrus and also Renato. So they both will speak of the new systems of uh, the production of citrus. Juliano has been for 30 years in the Fundi Citrus, working with research, focusing on management and the pests and he worked for a company that helped the citrus field in Florida. He has been the engineer and the technical coordinator at Citrus between 1989 and 1997, making the link between research and technology transfer and citrus growers and consultants. 
he was elected in that word as an outstanding agronomist in Brazilian secret culture in 2001 by the Centro de City de Cultura Valencia and he also has MBA in business management and he also the citrus culture masters in citrus culture Renato Bassanes is agronomist with a master's and doctorate in phytopathology from Ezauki. He has been a researcher at Fundicintro since 2000 and a collaborating professor in the Department of Phytopathology at Ezauki. He also dedicates his study to the evaluation of management and cultivation practices in the temporal and spatial progress of citrus greeny that are caused by the, these two diseases. Okay, so Juliano, Renato, you know me, and uh, you, you know that I like starting with questions. I am very curious, and I would like to ask you about the, what is, what is the new face of this citrus culture? Thank you, Daniela. You will have to stay here to see the face of this new citrus culture, because each speaker will bring something new. To have this presentation in a more dynamic way, I brought Renato here presenting this, the whole group of research, showing what we have related to it. We have a dynamic, and uh, the idea is to speak about the new citric culture. But we have to understand what happened in the past and in which stage we are. We will speak of the past, present, and future in five minutes. So it's uh, what we've been doing since the 60s. And when it's very complex, I bring the staff here to talk about it and then if you have hard questions you will ask Renato not me and we will start just to be very direct if we remember the citra culture it's very new here in Brazil it arrived here with the colonizers in 1530 in the beginning of the last century, it grew a lot. It was affected in the 30s and 40s because of the sadness that uh, happened. And then in the six, 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 60s, there was a new citrus culture with the root stalks. And then it grew focused on the nature uh, production. And then there was a frost in 1963 in Florida where we had the first juice industries in Brazil in the 60s. And the citrus culture at that time had a production of 40 billion boxes, 120,000 hectares. And the productivity that was very little related to the citrus culture in the world. And then what happened? 360 bucks per hectare. And with the frost is in Florida, the market changed. And then in a, in a place where they had the best climate and soil and they were the pioneers. So with that, Sao Paulo started growing towards a citrus culture with a fertile soil, a good infrastructure. It grew fast, taking advantage of the situation from the 60s. Then we had a second time that had lots of uncertainties, especially of the new disease. And then there was a super production. And now we've been living a citrus culture that it had to learn again to deal with these situations. Here, the main point between 1961 and 1986, we had this turnover, which was the frost. And the pioneer here, with this strategic vision, that so then we took opportunity we took we took advantage of it with the cargill they grew 
and the citrus grower also grew in the 80s, they were known as the Brazilian California because the profitability was very high. We had the very good moments. And the citrus culture that was born in Limeira, Sorocaba, it came from Limeira to Araraquara. It, it came from, it went to the Midwest where the land was cheaper. They were, it was adapting according to the areas that were more fertile, that were more suitable for this growth. Remember that we have uh, the river Tietê, which was not allowed to plant on the left. It was a region that was more limited in the state of Sao Paulo. And then this weight was migrating to other regions, and it was a citrus culture with, uh, w which was an upland, it was broader. When the citrus culture grows, the problems also grow because we have good things and bad things. With the monoculture, we had new disease. The, the CVC is a disease that wasn't known in the world. It was detected here. It came probably from the coffee and the we had this sudden death of the citrus and uh, we had this past that changed this disease and the citrus culture was much more complex the productive the productivity was lowering we had only 40 then we had 40 percent of plants with cvc there was a it was 40 in the past we had this this disease was 46 percent and now we have just one and then what happened with it again because of the sudden death and cvc it goes to another region it goes to regions that have a better distribution of the rain to run away from those issues and the irrigation was very important this new citrus culture is another root stock and the area that was occupied by the citrus culture grows and the best soil for a plant for like a, a, a farmer who plants sugar cane is good for the orange in the southeast and the, so the sugar cane went to the midwest of the state in 2004 to 2000, from 2004 to 2023 there was another moment Renato lived this with those new changes of root stocks with the nursery that were protected and the uncertainty the fear that we had that at, at that moment made the citrus grower reinvent themselves and they had to adapt themselves to this new technology there was a drastic reduction of the planting area because of the super crops the citrus culture was different and it started growing again a more concentrated juice we left a very small productivity to a much bigger one. The production was the same, but the hectares were reduced drastically. We had more than 800,000 hectares, and today we have 460,000 hectares. We kept the production with less hectare. Here, we show that the concentrated juice lost, lost some space. So now it's important to have varieties, a better distribution of this crop to meet this market.
The system here of production of seedlings is a model for the world we had as we had this from Africa and today people come to Brazil to learn this technology and that is pacing that they had 300 plants per hectare today is like around 800 for example it's a new concept you will see that in this new citrus culture we will have to have a leap of technology and we will have to readapt ourselves and a critical point here for this growth of productivity besides the rootstocks, the varieties, the irrigation that is today is almost 40% of this segment is the preparation of the soil. There is nothing else that helps to protect the plant from stress or from a disease. For example, as greening as a very good system for the root and we have evolved today we use the some kinds of technology we have the organic material the fossil and it's totally different how a plant behaves when it was contaminated by the greening than when it has a, a better system. These are the things that I would like to highlight that have made the difference. With, with those concepts, we have to think of the root stock, how to prune, the speeches will be about about it, and how we can adapt to uh, to an intense need of sanitation, tr phytosanitary treatment. And it has changed the citro culture, and it has made it the most complex culture. It is the most difficult segment to deal with, especially when there is the greening. The producer has to be on 24-7. I would give this part that I think is more current and critical for Renato to be able to position all the other information according to Greening. You know that Florida left the level of 240 million of boxes reached in the last uh, crop 20 million of box and became came back to the other. Most of them were contaminated and this is a, a limit factor in the feasibility of the citric culture in any place in the world, China, Florida, India, and Renato is going to give us the last information for us about this theme of greening. Thank you, Juliana. The easiest part was for me. So, in fact, citric culture in all its story in has evolved applying technology, seeking productivity in for for the challenges it has had and are highlighted by the diseases we had CVC in 87, the, the citrical canker in 97, they had a, a work of more than 4,000 people to eradicate the, the canker and then have subtle death destroying this and pretty much redoing the citric culture and making the uh, producer to use uh, rootstocks and using more irrigation for these rootstocks who, who were more tolerant to uh, lemon for example and the, the historic was the greening in 74 in 2004 and they said in 2005 in Florida it was responsible for the collapse of the citric culture in Florida where there wasn't an adequate management to eliminate the, the sick plants and the controlling the vector insect. And in Sao Paulo, we could keep the disease at levels, delaying its progress. We couldn't eradicate the disease, but we suppressed this in comfortable levels until we reached now in 2020, 2020 22, 23, when Pisolidium exploded because of the disease diseases who grew all the resources and they came to other plants and we were dependent on the chemi chemical control of psilidium and it started having some failures uh, and more currently the problem of resistance of psilidium for three groups as 
in the tripod of control we had eliminating this uh, sick plants and uh, citriculture it was limped and the disease grew a lot to 38 percent into 2023 in some regions over 50 percent of Duatina, Brotas, Porto Ferreira, Limeira and Avaré and we also have regions where the disease is still in comfortable levels that if we do the right work we can revert this progress of the disease and this will change all the game because greening it affects the longevity of the orchards difficulty of renovation especially if you have orchards which are infected together with new orchards this renovation is difficult so we need to apply the innovation and technology to be able to renew these these orchards we have, we have to apply technology I think here got stuck. Technology to increase longev the longevity of the orchards and the new orchards are being infected very quickly and they are product productive. And we need to look for ways to improve that in order to avoid this trend of increasing of fall of fruits because of the greening, which is a, bi a big concern. And then, we will have some trains that we'll see from now on. Where am, am I going to plant the citriculture? Where is the new citriculture going to? How is it going to be driven in regions with high incidence of greening? We will need to seek the try of uh, the, the longevity of that. In regions where the disease is low, we will have a migration of citriculture to those places seeking within the state of Sao Paulo areas where you have few uh, properties of citrus and going to the extreme areas north, uh, northwest and south and also going to other states. In those places, you need to have properties. The properties are going to be different. The management is going to be different for us not to carry the same problems from here to the other places. In these places, we will have also challenges to be uh, seek and to be solved. We'll have the first challenge, which is the migration of citriculture, which would move. This way we're gonna need these um, tools to knowing where I can plant them, in which conditions, where I need to irrigate, where I'll have workforce, which varieties of rootstock, which are adequate to each kind of soil, which climate condition we have to to be on that tools and all the other challenges I will give back to Giuliano saying that greening was a highlight that changed citriculture in all the places that greening showed up citriculture had to change it and it's gonna, not going to be different here for us we will need to learn how to control better these bacteria, the psyllid and knowing how to work in, in together to solve this problem and today, every day, we have restrictions which are higher to using pesticides. And we have to increase our applications, rationalize them. And all the chemical products and biological, this is a trend in the world. We need to follow this. This is a big challenge in greening nowadays. This is our main challenge. Citriculture migrating because of greening. And we will need to know how to control this disease and do, then we will have other challenges. And Julian is going to finish. And not only greening for our life not to be easy, what was the situation in which two or three decades ago showed a lot and where workforce was a big problem. Not only scarcity, but also solidity and qualifi qualification and we will be centered and I was talking to Dr. Orlando in the Secretariat we have to focus uh, training people education so we have here we have this message of Valor last week saying that employees in agro agriculture is more formal and qualified and this is going to be more complex another important point that we have to analyze is the issue of the format of the orchards not only the 
beyond the density they have been changing with the greening, with the contamination in young areas of about more than 20 percent, about 38 percent of the state with contaminated plants, every day more we see this this situation in orchards of 80, 8 years, 5 years, 2, 3, and this become brings a complexity for pulverization, for spraying, and for the crops, harvests. And so this issue needs to be inserted in our point of view according to the challenges within what is going to be discussed on how we are going to get adapted to this new reality. How are we going to change leaving the current orchards where the harvest is manual and we have a, a company studying that will show today what there is and what can be done nowadays for us to optimize and gain according to productivity. Agricef is going to be showing a work that was hired by Funde Citrus, a case study comparing eight companies and which points are the strongest in opportunities that we will have. And what will come for us to have this mechanical harvesting or semi-mechanical in a short term? As this is a very big challenge and one of the most difficult cultures to be mechanized, the harvesting, which is the orange, the citrus. We have this experience of many people, Tucumán, Spain, telling us about other cultures and we're not going to sell juice orange and if we don't have as the Dr. Monaco doctors and in the agriculture 4.0 the environment sustainability will be even more strategic and we have to remember Sec Secretary, that there is not only one citric culture in the world that has a more preserved area in the world other than Sao Paulo State. This needs to be preserved. The world looks at us and they think we are destroying Amazon. We have three hectares and, and a half and one hectare, which is preserved area. So this is an example. This is a success case. And what do we imagine? that technology, the biotechnology, the sum of all these knowledges as we don't have the, the silver bullet and I believe that we have many copper bullet, the copper uh, bullets I can say in the future probably or in the present in short and midterm. We know we understand much more than our enemy. We know that solid concentrates more than 50% in the first 50 meters. We know that a tree, more vigorous tree, or because of its variety or because of its roots, rootstock, attract more the psyllid. So one of the strategies that our group imagine is that you have to concentrate the psyllid in a small range, restrict for it to attract to be attracted in that area and limit the area of expansion of greening. So nowadays we have implemented the properties where you use a more vigorous uh, rootstock with a more attractive variety with many uh, apply, apply applications of systemics for you to concentrate this work using also the, the bait planting. Also, myrtle associated to citrus and kaolin as well, more in the internal area for it to, to work as a repeller. And in this game, the first point and more strategic, which is it, Renato? What is more important for a producer nowadays today is the place where they're going to plant. They need to be in an isolated area or in, a, in an area where the neighbor is going to be working with them in the coordinated management for the disease because he can work in his property in a neighbor that does not do anything he's going to be contaminated anyways so bigger properties and before planting knowing what is going to be surrounding the property so doing this analysis this is important what Renato has said and I say that the first priority is choosing the area and the second one is uh, planting because if you plant in an area which is infected highly infected without a group work 
It is a very difficult situation with the knowledge we have nowadays. But fortunately, Selid lives in the citrus and myrtle, and this is a, a, an advantage for us. It is not in the forest, in the grass. If we clean uh, around the property, you reduce drastically the population of uh, migrant Selid. Selid. We work more in the private part and more than 40 million trees in the last years. We work on that. This work needs to be led by the government of the state of Sao Paulo. We, producers alone, it's, it's not enough. So it, this is our demand. And a dream which will come, come true is that technology, according to technology, will have in midterm the repellent plants to sell it and we have the resistance gene also to bacteria that causes the greening. So we need to cross that. For us to get there, we need to gain time. For this, we need that citric culture to get adapted as we did with CVC during two decades for in the second moment us to get back to plant in those areas which were more affected, but in another scenario with other knowledge. So our point of view is that Sao Paulo, differently from most of the citric culture in the world, will get adapted and we will use this moment where orange is scarce in the world and we, we're going to use this opportunity with risk, of course, but we need to get that risk and, this, and be professional for us to be able to win this new concept. This process also is very important using plants that grow less, smaller, for it also to be adapted in this new system of harvesting. I learned that this was our last slide, right, Renato? And there's a message here that you can go deep in each theme uh, with more care. I think we, we could talk about everything. Do you want to add any other comments? So just answering Daniela's the new citriculture need to be different need to have innovation need to get be adapted to greening it will change the situation of citriculture looking seeking more efficient effic uh, efficiency productivity and also sustainability so that's what we think of the new citriculture we are on the way but it's a process to be to be gone so thank you for all your attention Good luck to all our speakers that are coming after us who will detail more of that. Thank you, Renato. Thank you, Juliano, for bringing those important information for us. And I remind you that the questions can be sent to Juliano and Renato, but they will answer at the end of this panel in the morning in the round table that we will have after the next speech and following our schedule I would like to call here to the stage the researcher of Embrapa Eduardo Augusto Girardi Girardo has post-graduation in agronomic engineering masters and doctorate in agronomy by Exalc USP and in these opportunities he concentrated he dedicated to development of alternative methods of citrus propagation and studies on uh, physiology of seedling production under the controlled water deficiency. Since 2010, he has been a researcher at Embrapa Cassava and Fruit Cultivation and responsible for the mixed unity for research and technology transfer in the citrus belt between Embrapa, Copper Citrus and Funde Citrus. Since 2022, he has been permanent professor at the postgraduate program in agronomy at the, fact, the University of Agricultural and Veterinary Sciences at UNESCO Jaboticabal. Gerard, it is a pleasure having you here with us. You will bring us the information of new rootstocks and high density and pruning in Brazil. This is really important as well. Thank you so much. Thank you, Daniela. Good morning, everyone. I hope that you enjoy this symposium. It was made to meet all your needs and bring information that can help you. And I really thank you all the staff of Fundi Street Trust for the opportunity to contribute to this event. We will talk a little bit about new rootstocks 
the results of the research, the pruning density, and take advantage of this day to reflect about it. And I start with, uh, I have here the main star, and I will trigger you which is the orange. So what fits inside an orange? Inside it, the first impression is that it can have 100 milliliters of sugar, vitamin C, but uh, for real, it has a history of 4,000 years, 4 million hectares cultivated here, only in the state of Sao Paulo, uh, lots of jobs. So it fits a lot inside this orange. I'm sure that many people are thinking that it, the budget can also fit here. And the, to be able to do it, we need it to fit also the produ productivity. It also fits inside my pocket. Productivity, yes, as Renato and Juliano said, Brazil has been doing its homework. For the last 50 years, our productivity has doubled, even though we had lots of challenges. When we compare to other countries, it's important to have a position. The United States, which has been the biggest producers with higher productivity than Brazil until the 90s. But then with the greening, they had a drastic fall. They made some wrong choices. And uh, the producers who had lived with the greening couldn't overcome this. But we have important examples here, such as China, that also has been impacted by greening. But as they changed some technological procedures, they have had impressive productivity. Even the south of Africa, the the, the, the south of Africa, has had has adopted new technologies. It is a very relevant country related to citrus. Each of these examples has searched for a new system of production to be able to have this productivity. And we've shown here how we have uh, done this in those last 20 years, which is a citrus belt system. We know that uh, to produce well is to have those kinds of technologies. And this production system has been pressed by the presence of greening. Today, the fact is the technological reality, the knowledge don't enable us to say that there will be a system of production with the greening able to keep high quality production. It's not available, it's not probable. So we'll have to migrate and adapt to combat this disease. Different systems of production can happen. I've seen some interesting systems in the region, in some regions, with some central pivot, with a system of irrigation. I see citriculture in other regions with polyculture. Imagine, imagine the impact that greening can have on in, in, on a space like this. Also, the protected system, water and forest, some alternative systems that we are not used to. I don't know which product, production system you will choose, but for sure, regardless of them, we have three main factors that are not interlinked, and they will be in this reality. The planting density and the pruning and the semi and the dwarf and semi-dwarf rootstocks and probably the irrigation that will be in it. Speaking of uh, them, the, den the density, for example, for the last 40 years, the density 
has doubled. It was bigger in 2018, and now it has a balance point, but it is now we have the double of the trees that we had in the past. It was encouraged because of the productivity. Here I have a classical case, which was in Bebedouro, that shows all the others that were carried out in the other states. In the last five to six crops, we can have a gain of 50, 60 percent when we work with 700 plants per hectare compared to 300, for example. Even though this productivity, as the orchard gets older, it is closer through this life, the gain is from 15 to 20 percent. So that's what the producer had as a strategy. And then it's important for our reality. Besides the impact on productivity, we are saying that this density can be a strategy inside this production model of uh, facing greening. Some studies that have been carried out in new orchards in the region of Adaraquara are showing that when we use in the edge of the properties the double of the planting, the density is 2.5 less than the others. And the symptomatic plants are 26% less, only in the edge of 150 meters. And this trend will continue inside the orchard because there will be a dilution effect. The insects that come from outside will be bigger for the ones that are in the edge. So we can mitigate this issue and we, we sum up with other strategies. However, we have seen some planning mistakes some uh, exaggerated density, especially for the for when they take decisions related pruning. A tool that should be a support can be something bad, especially here in this density where you don't have, you are not able to do what you are supposed to. You can't go with the machine through it, and then you have impacts on the disease and you also produce production drop. That's why when we go through this density, we have to accept that the pruning is a, an, is an inevitable practice nowadays and it also will be in the new citra culture. We have colleagues that are having questions related to the pruning. They make the spacing bigger. Uh, Emerson has shared that they work with intense pruning every year. And in this world, there are a lot of questions. Because of that, we've done We've carried out some researches, and we started in 2020. In those uh, queries, we've been evaluating the effect of the pruning, the quality of the orange trees. And here, we evaluate the American balance, all the, situ all the possible situations. And uh, we've seen that if you do uh, mild prunings uh, to the exp expansion of the fruits, when we see the small impact of it, that's in the pre-flower period, in the late ones, it's different. So when we speak of a production, it has We've had better results. We can speak only of this. We have to, to think of the impact of greening, too. The, the prunings are... The prunings have been checked 
all the time. So here in the, in the pink line, we have the flow of, of the plants that are not pruned in the upland. And what we've seen here, they blossom in the rain period. And when we have the pruning management that gets to this natural moment of it, is the red line, which is the pre-floral period. So then we can't have a second flow. And in the other strategies, in the other moments, we have a reduction of plantings. And we'll make the management more expensive because of this. So every time there is humidity in the soil because of the irrigation or rain, we see 20 days to start a new blossoming in places where there is a bigger humidity and this can be the double of it and then to 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 make it to 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 be clear here the the care in this new study we've monitored some uh, edges of the farmers that had uh, the pruning every four, 40 years in the edge to attract the, piece, the, the sealant. And after three years of study, we've seen that 70% more than of capture in those, uh, in those ranges. And they had this doubled. And then they had this accumulation every two years. So it's necessary when we practice the pruning to have the preventive care. It's a challenge, this sum up of uh, pruning and the density because 90% of those root stalks here in this belt are vigorous varieties, like a clove, among others. We are using varieties that make this management difficult. That's why the institutions that work with genetic, we've been developing new rootstocks. And for the next years, is that we will have 40 new varieties that will be launched among Instituto Agronomo, Embrapa, and the other nurseries such as Spain, the United States and uh, semi dwarf and dwarf. So the good news here is that there is a good offer of varieties that has never been in the citrus culture. But the variation of this material, this extension of uh, growth is that we can have, that's why this adoption has to be slow. But the studies have shown that those dwarf plants have uh, a different production, a different potential of productivity. And it implies that for those varieties, we need to have a higher density to have a bigger productivity. Here I exemplify you what is a vigorous rootstock, example of a plant in a place insured in a subtropical in upland with 10 years. It requires a control of size for controlling the pruning. And to give you an example, what is a rootstock, which is semi-dwarf, where the reduction of volume is about 25%, and where it is possible to have this uplanding more intense and moderate, and in our current production system, and also that ones that are, in fact, dwarf that reduce 70% or more in the crown volume, and they present good levels of efficiency, productive efficiency, and justify the effort for crop, for uh, thickening co cultivation. These dwarf ones, they have high productive efficiency, and as we reduce the volume of the crown, we increase the quantity of fruit by cubic meter because the distribution of the light on the crown and the parts of carbohydrates are more balanced. The image on the top, you see a rootstock internally in the dwarf plant, and uh, down you see the hollowed one. 
and this distribution does not only bring more fruit but also more sugars and it also they are d derived from foliata and they are more vigorous with less uh, smaller crowns they are accumulate more solubles in the, in the juice these two goals are important but also we cannot think about the root stocks as any other practices I am mentioning here without thinking in the greening impact that's the reason we had great experiments in the copper citrus of citrus, citrus to evaluate different uh, situations of crown and rootstock under the vector management. In these circumstances, we see within seven years of experimenting that there are differences on how the disease uh, uh, progress. As we see in the first graph, only the uh, the effect of the the parts we see there they are susceptible in the as the poncant entering in oranges with the the the, the leaf which the instance is slower for the uh, blossoming and the uh, blooming and the two root stalks also for the all the evaluated uh, crowns we saw that instance was lower for the dwarf rootstocks and it's even more fast for the ones that are vigorous as, such as the uh, lemons and tangerines. But this is not a gen genetic uh, part. This, all of them are susceptible to this disease. What explains that? Is that the rootstocks they have indirect effects in the blooming of the crown. It's in the bloom that the greening happens. That's where we have to focus. In studies carried by the Agronomic Institute in Corderopolis, they show that the variety, the most vigorous as the subtropical plants, that uh, one and a half years of grambling compared to a fly dragon of a dwarf rootstock, they present blooms which are double of the size, double of opportunities for psyllid to, to eat and reproduce. And also the plants which are more vigorous, they bloom with more more often and the captures are 40% higher than in psyllid in, uh, according to the other plants. The result is that after one year and a half you observe in uh, ele elevated pressure 60% of disease sick plants in the vigorous rootstocks and 18% of the dwarf rootstocks. So it's a matter of bloom. What happens when we gather these three factors? When we manage varieties of different vigor, vigorous, and they are pruned in different levels of spacing. In this experiment, which was driven here in Gavion Peixoto in irrigated conditions, we compared four situations. We have in the first column uh, vigorous rootstock with a Valencia orange in this traditional space of 500 plants per hectare and 50 cubic meters, a big, big plant. It was compared with a semi-dwarf rootstock, which was which was going to be 1697, and the, the plant about 20, 30 cubic meters, and it was moderated in about 700 plants by hectare, and a super danced with uh, other plants. And then we compared with Swingo Tractor Point, which is an experiment. It's not a commercial variety. It was planted about 1,000 plants by hectare. After seven crops evaluated, if we consider 100% the most rigorous plant, we see that in conditions of rootstock, dwarf rootstock, the reduction of production accumulated are discrete, acceptable, with gains of about 25% of reduction in the cubics of pi hectare. And beyond that, a gain of one bricks level in the south one. And in the dwarf rootstock, even though the cubic reduced 40%, the productivity drop was big and showing that the space is not adequate and probably the nutrition and the irrigation conditions as well. So in this case, the semi-dwarf showed that uh, do we have an agronomic advantage which was clear. And also in this experiment, the same way we saw in Bebedouro, after 10, year, 10 years of trials, we had 27% of accumulated incidence in the vigorous rootstock, which was the d double according to the dwarf rootstock. In the second experiment, 
and now with the conditions in Matão, we compared three situations. The uh, vigorous rootstock, which is Natal orange, root rooted in in 25 cubics, about 700 plants per hectare in an area about 25 cubic meters. We have this crown, which was um, grafted in the plant, and the, the space was big, to 1,200 plants per hectare. And with the semi-dwarf, with six uh, cubic meters and about 1,200 uh, plants by hectare. Considering that, we had a gain of almost 20% of productivity in four crops, uh, followed up to now with the dwarf rootstock, and re with a reduction of 26% in the volume and a discrete gain in the quantity of the juice. The dwarf improved the quality of the juice, reduced by double the, the cubic meters, and we couldn't uh, produce a lot. In the picture, we saw that it's necessary to thicken more because we depend on appropriate machines and now they are not available. And these are objects of many speeches and researches that we presented today. Pay attention on what everybody will say. There's one more experiment, one more story about greening. Here, after seven years, we had the point of view of our experiment, and you can see the installments of the, the dwarf plants with a uh, limit with more rigorous, as they Julian and Renato commented, and the, the parts of the rootstocks which were more spaced. And what we see at the moment is um, an instance of 10% in the commercial, and on the border four and a half percent and the internal parts only one and a half percent in average using the rootstocks with a more reduced uh, vigor. The dwarf rootstock that we have more experience on the field now is the Trifoliata fly dragon which is used with limas asses and lemons. There are about 130,000 plants of fly dragon in Sao Paulo state and other states, and we are seeking each one of these plants to understand if this rootstock can be an element in the future. And I bring you here, after visiting many areas, a case study. We see here in Minas, we see here in the other regions, also Paraná and Sao Paulo, north of Sao Paulo, with many other parts. Let's talk about a case, which is a very nice experiment, trial, also in Matão, using irrigation, in which we have a, a conventional grove of Valencia orange, which was planted in 2012, with dropping 700 plants by hectare, resulting currently in 2023 approximately 30,000 cubic meters by hectare, comparing to a Valencia grove planted by the side, also irrigated, but with five meters, about 1,500 plants by hectare. And uh, the age of these fly dragon plants are 11 years. You see one person of 107 meters as a model, and we have only 11,000 cubic meters by hectare. You know that great part of uh, beyond the crop, not using only ladder, uh, like harvesting a higher plant or a lower plant, we have all the pests now, practically, they are controlled by spraying, which doses and concentrations are recommended in volume by uh, cubic meters. Thinking about that, we got a program that was designed. Thinking about that, we thought we made a simulation considering a spraying program together with the art state for controlling these paths, considering springs that are together and considering that the management of each 10 days controlling the spray of psyllid. We got, after 10 years cultivating that, about 6% of accumulated greening in the conventional grove and only 2% in the dwarf grove. And with the help of Eduardo Ferrati, which is uh, an, a student of Fondicitrus, we are simulating scenarios. And we will bring some results for you, some 
final considerations. Considering this premises, we consider that the cost not only not only with seedling is higher, 170 percent, 17 percent, and the using fly dragons are more expensive. But considering the cost with the spraying, annual spraying, we saw uh, an average reduction of 50%. The costs with machinery and workforce for spraying are curiously equivalent. And the, uh, the thickening growth they have, they are bigger, you have less time for reloading the sprayer. One thing compensated the other. And the great economy comes with the products, uh, the phytosanitary products. About 70% of production in the main culture pests. The pruning was 100% lesser because in case of this, this grove, the first pruning will be now with seven years old, seven years. Eradicating lesser in function of lesser incidence of H and B and reducing the cost of harvesting in about 75% considering the the yield of 100 boxes in the dwarf the the grove and according to the other conventional grove we saw a reduction in the dwarf which was six percent less productive in the last six crops evaluated but even though it got a, an average in about 1500 1400 boxes per hectare which is competitive and not only being a, a rootstock of fly dragon, it resulted in almost 20% of soluble sodium. In terms of uh, indicators in sustainability, we, ha we saw expressive reductions in consumption of water, uh, reduction, uh, the CO2 emission, a reduction of almost double of uh, active ingredients applied by Hector, and an increase of 175%. 155% in productive efficiency. These are important elements for sustainability. This way, the message I want to leave you here is that the citric culture of future, of present, which is being transformed, it requires productive systems which are productive of high quality and productivity. There won't be a different model. If so, we would be behind the greening thing still going on we have to face that salad is uh, in the in the in the blooms and our citric culture first of all needs to go down the crop the harvesting need to go there using the semi dwarf to be possible to go on the machines you will see using the dwarf rootstocks we have to walk through uh, towards that we have to count on you and Put your opinion, this is my opinion, you test more, evaluate, help managing those varieties for them to be expressed, to express their productivity and helping the sustainability of the sector. So that's the work that involves many research institutions, many collaborators, many partner companies. And I get this moment to thank not only the people who are participating in the results I showed, but also that help us in many other trials and thank you so much I finished I said that the orange would return and I finish asking you how many science how much science fits in this orange it fits in the pocket how much science fits in this orange a lot of science use science invest in science this will help you to construct this new citric culture thank you so much thank you for the contribution that you have brought so the questions can be asked through our WhatsApp of communication, we have the QR code to to use it. Our number is sixteen nine nine six two two four seven one. In the end of this last panel, we'll have a round table, and all those questions will be answered. Now we'll have a break of 10 minutes 
and then when we come back we'll have two more speeches and the round table. See soon. Bom dia a todos mais uma vez. Good morning, everyone. Eu peço, por favor, que todos I ask you please to take your seats so that we can essa, start again this first panel of the International Symposium of the New, the new Citra Culture, New Automation Systems of Citrus. We have more speeches in this second part of this morning, and then we'll have the round table answering your questions through WhatsApp of communication through our QR code. Feel free to send your questions and we would like to remind you that the whole event is being recorded and it will be on our communication channels of YouTube available for you translated into Portuguese, English and Spanish. Starting again our first part of this symposium before we call the speaker of the second part of this symposium, I would like to call again Juliano Aires the f because we will honor him, we will honor a feature of our Citra culture. He has dedicated himself to the sector. It's been more than 60 years of hard work, which has been a history that will be celebrated and endured here today. Our honored person got here in January of 1960. He was hired to have the first uh, the first company of it after visiting many cities of the region he chose Araraquara and uh, Cultural was uh, and with Cultural also he had uh, a passion for Araraquara this is just a little bit of his history what else can we say about this important person for the sea Citra culture. Mr. Jack, we are very excited here. A few people know him, the first engineer, the founder of it, that he came in the 60s to choose the place where he would have the, the Orange Company. Mr. Jack chose Araraquara because it was the only place that was available where the power was available to make the company run. It was between Bebedouro, Limeira, Araraquara. We chose Araraquara because Bebedouro and Araraquara didn't have available power. The mayors promised that for June we would have it by June but as we know the politicians I made the choice of having the company here in Araraquara, which was better. And with his vision, he founded this first company, Sucanaza, which is which was in 1963, always by Mrs. Ariane. He's from Mar Morocco, and then he became a French citizen and a Brazilian citizen too. And among everything he has done, to like building by building this company, 
And today, it's a, it's a very important brand in the whole world. Kindly, when Greening affected the groves of his farm, he gave his property for an experiment. The plant that I mentioned for biotechnology that has been produced the same way as he did the company came from, will come from his farm. He doesn't want to have sugar cane plants. He wants to have oranges again. So the, 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 the deal that we have here is to have this experiment here in Adadaquado, which is very near the toll booth that we have on the road. And uh, he will have a second history. He will enable us to bring those orange trees to those citrus growers that are here. And I found out something that he went to the best university of Paris in Versailles and the, his friend was José Bové. Both found out that they went to college at the same time, but they didn't know. So that's your party. Dr. Monaco is here as the president of the Fundicitrus, lots of citrus growers. So we would like, on behalf of the Fundicitrus, to honor you for everything that you have done, not only for the industry, but also for the research area here we have a plate Mr. Jackson and Mrs. Adiani from the Citrus on the behalf of the sector really thanks for the interest in this research your historical relevance for Brazil which has been here for more than 60 years will be recognized and celebrated and here today November 7th 2023 so I'll ask Mr. Mo Mr. Monaco to give this plate to you on our behalf thank you Mr. Jack I really thank you for this for this moment. I just would like to say that when I got here in 1962, I had the pleasure to meet the giant people from this sector who were Edu Banisca and today Zucutrali. Unfortunately, they have passed away, but they are also very important to the development of the citrus culture. So, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Jack. Thank you, all of you. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you. Mrs. Ariane, thank you for this dedication. Obrigada, Sr. Jacques, Sra. Ariane, parabéns pela trajetória tão importante para a citricultura. And uh, this journey was so important to the citric culture. People who have written this history in our country have contributed to this sector, and they leave their footprints here so then other generations can inspire themselves. And that Adaquada was the chosen city by him to do it, so congrats. And uh, it was something done together, always together, toward this goal, which is to promote our citrus, citrus culture, to turn the product with more quality. And that's the goal of this symposium, to improve, to enhance the techniques, the view that we have of this planting, to bring healthier plants, more competitive ones, to make our country grow even more and more, especially in the external market. So let's 
go back to our speeches here. Now we will have our first international speech representing this Spanish group. We will receive here Ignacio Glasses that since 2018 he has worked as a technical and development manager of the Agro Milhora group. His scientific activities focus mainly on the evaluation of plant material as well as conduction systems in different species of sweet fruit and in recent years dried fruits and citrus fruits as well as their effect on agronomical production. For more than 30 years, he has been carrying out intense work to transfer the information obtained to the production sector with the goal of improving its competitiveness. The ones who will wear the headphones, so channel one is per Portuguese, channel two English, and channel three will be in Portuguese. Nasu Iglesias will be about the new productive model for the citrus culture that will be more efficient and sustainable. So I really thank you for being here. Bueno, son cuestiones del directo, no pasa nada. Un placer estar aquí, bon día. Es la única palabra que sé en brasilero, disculpen. Yo hablaré en español. Voy a intentar facilitar la traducción a las colegas porque hablo un poco de prisa. Be we will be fast here, and as I said, it's a pleasure to be here to explain what we've been doing in this field and uh, about the milestone for this area, and I will speak globally because especially the cost is, but we have to focus on what has happened to the others. We have to tell our, about our history, what we can copy from this history. In the end, we will see this model of a culture, and in the end, we will speak of the of the of the future science and technology we will be choosing other fruits so it's the content that we have for today so i'd like to tell that i was born in a citrus multinational and as you can see we've been in 13 countries 80 million of plants so that's the biggest company that we have in the area so we have this in our on our website so i'm not going to 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 go into details but agro Milhora has been for 30 years it has uh, this olive groves we have 370,000 hectares so we have here those uh, olives as you see this is a historical change. People who are here, the founders said that we were crazy when we used the machinery. And today we have the double of it. That's the future. So maybe when I finish the presentation, maybe we will say that what I'm explaining here is not possible, but I'm sure that it will be possible because I will change the history of humanity. I believe that there are three words that are very important, sustainability, those models, as you see here, I will uh, go back here. So as you see those models, there are two things that are important. Which one, what is the common dominator here? You will see two things. First, the verticality, the linear verticality, and the second, there will you will see another thing that is very important that's the intensification we are we are not speaking of uh, five meters but one meter and why why do we need this intensification to have a faster production to be aligned so that we can use the machine in a better way how can we use the robot the man it's important to be aligned and intensification. That's what I'm going to show you with those kinds of trees, as you see here. What comes with them? We have the sustainability. Why? Why are they more sustainable? Because we are more efficient in the usage of it. I will show you some examples. And why? Why do we need this efficiency? Because we have this 
innovation. We have something different here. So it's clear here that the first message for those models is the correct portal. As we see the root stocks, how, how do we call those in Portuguese, the, the horse? The first part, when we think of those intensive orchards, I, 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 here we have the citrus part. So what kind of root stocks do we have for melon and the other fruits, for peaches and so on? We have to go further with some small trees. That's what Eduardo was saying, that are more efficient at the basis. The first point here is to have those barriers for those root stocks. And I will bring here an example how it worked. Before going to the, to this theme of some examples, we will talk about cost of production. And here bringing some uh, information about Spain. On the left, you have which are the main costs of production. You can see on the right about 40% and, and the pruning and 7% of pruning. And this is the question. Can we reduce the cost of work? If I ask you, you would say yes, yes, we can reduce the costs of workforce and that's what we are going to evaluate here. So do not forget the part of pesticides and phytosanitary, 17%. We can be more efficient applying sanitary products. Yes, we can be more efficient. And the world problem is what you can see here on the screen. Look at what happened with the workforce in Spain. The cost, to, uh, that what happened in two years ago, it increased 40%. And what is happening in Europe now? It is happening that the price of the fruit in, in oranges, it's constant. This is the problem we have. Pretty much Brazil has not manifested these problems. So let's go back a little bit in history to about 60 years ago for apples. And let me explain to you what we did. Why did it change within the history of apple trees? Because we had a, a standard, Kemenovi, which is the best one. This is the best stock, uh, rootstock. So what is the message? We do need the best standard in history of citriculture. And if there is citriculture 4.0, even better. So it's a very important standard. This is a plant in the third year with 70 tons per hectare in the third year. This is productive efficiency in this of a standard. We match the standard in a very high productive variation. This is amazing. This is sustainable intensification. Why is it sustainable? Because in the third year, we got to harvest 70,000 and we could pay the, the, the fabrication. We cannot add value we, according to the production of the citrus in the fifth year we are in another level of production right i think this picture is extremely important look what is m9 it is the best uh, rootstock in the history but what does bring the intensification it means producing faster here you see three densities of production and see then as more trees per hectare the growth is higher bigger this allows us to recover before the investment this needs to be clear for you so this return of faster production more intense has a higher cost in production so let's go to the to, to the story there are for 70 years we had started a production of apple trees in spain this is the past the past this is the the current citrus in brazil Let's compare. And what would we do in 20 years after? This is the change. This is the proposal for you. What is the change? That's the spectacular. Look, 300 trees per hectare to 2,800 trees per hectare here. What could, could we do with the intensification? As we have small spaces and I keep losing spaces while they produce, this is a story. And the great story that exists is the density of the, 
the planting. More trees per hectare, higher it is and better are the planting, the production. What do you do when this person is harvesting here? He can grab 125 kilos per hour and here in, in he can do that for 200 days and he doesn't get rested and here they get tired for, for in hours, even here and there. This is extremely important. And what does it allow among that? Redu reducing costs in about 40% in all the the life of the, the planting. So all the life of the plantation, this is an important change. Another important aspect is why does why do smaller trees are more efficient? Can you understand the translation? Can you understand that? You can see here the green line are the small trees. What is wood, what is leaf, and what is going to be fruit. If I would ask you, what do you think about it? What will be a big tree? Which part will go to the fruit? I believe that the story Eduardo mentioned very well about that the small trees, because they don't don't have the structural line, they are more efficient. You see that 45% of carbohydrate that go to the fruit from a big tree, in the small one is pretty much the double. And what you see on the back is fruit. This is a very important data of a predictive efficiency. Why do why are they more efficient? Because the crown is bigger. They have more lightning. This is the architecture of the crown. This is an important aspect. We're going to make history. Let's go browse now for 50 years from 1950. And now we I will put some different concepts. Not going to put all of them. Let's take let's take a look to see if it's going it's going to forward. I'm not going to mention all of them because it's going to be too long. Only the ideal ones. Uh, 50 years, a 50 years old tree, and a tree M9, a small one and a big one. And here you have the sanitary treatments, nitrogen, water, kilos per hour counted, and the productive efficiency, all of them by hectare. See what happened. Changing from a big tree to a small tree, we got four times more production in 70 tons, and we spent half of the price. However, in the in the current scenario, we do what we did before in four hectares, and this new concept will uh, describe the fauna very well. It's in a sustainable way. There's not sustainability if there's no intensification. This needs to be clear for you. Let's see a small video, a short video, only for you to see how tiring it was putting the, the, the stairs, going up 20 steps with the bag. I, you can see that the person who's harvesting, he needs to go up, he needs to fill the bag, he needs to go down. And this person is spends 30% of his time going up and down. After four hours, he's extremely tired. So let's see what we did afterwards. Here you see that the, it has a more organized crown, it improves efficiency. This was the first step we did, changing the format of the crown. And what did we do after that? We have a platform, a, a wide platform, a plain platform with a me a mechanization, and the machine goes in the middle. These workers will just need to uh, harvest the, the apple and put on the belt. They just do this movement. This is nothing. This worker doesn't get tired very easily. The machine will do all the work. The machine will goes and works. It's much easier. And what did we do afterwards? We decreased, reduced the size of the crown. And we put a train. So the worker just pick up from the tree. He doesn't need trees because he does that from the floor. And this is the other example, which is done with the vins. Count uh, telling these stories, you can think about the citrus. Can we do something similar? This change of life quality of the worker. Yes, we are thinking on their community. How will they harvest with this total facility? 
They are harvesting 220 kilos per hour, 220 kilos per hour with apples, which is a much more delicate fruit that you cannot uh, touch that. This is deficiency of technology working for the fruit. So you can see here which movement they need to do. This is an example of what we did in with the apples in pears and peaches there is a final part here that is important for you to see can you see how the trains go in each line which kind of space we have only three meters be among the trees and 60 centimeters among the between the trees this is a planting tree here we are uh, harvesting flowers because we lack that so one hour per hectare we have this machine that goes there these are peaches there's no problem here we just to prune we will prune that we will cut by the side and we prune that this is uh, we, this is a uh, very effective we are spraying after 50 years we will think how much did we lose of the spray i think there's another video here let me see if we can play it you see how story has changed from a very big tree which we lost almost all of them this small this tree is smaller but we still lost a lot especially in the winter and let's see how we can improve how we improved we see that there are still lots of opportunities these are apple trees and we see how we can correct this <laughs> this is a, a complete plant of apples these are almonds we, you see how much we lose it looks like a wall and on the wall you can see that we lost very few products because it's very very small and they have a block so how can we see that even more doing three on the same time we adapted a machine and this was done in Spain 20% of the vi the olive is treated that way it is treated by the sides each one and this does it loses very little now in the apple trees this is in German where we applied for higher fruits it could be done in citrus as well there's no problem we also do that here also in pears in Belgium you see how they touch the both sides of the tree so they take the the pruner and they prune also the the grass so what happened here let's say that we had about 65 percent now we reached 15 percent so imagine how much money we are saving it's incredible but what is important is what Eduardo was saying before see how we reduce the volume per hectare from 1600 liters to uh, 550 one-third of the volume if you do here 20 30 40 treatments this will have this will cost a lot so imagine the concept of small trees and the cost and efficiency in is a very important uh, environmental aspect in there are also the consequences I'm not gonna talk about Florida I would like to comment some things but I'm not gonna touch on that only for you to have an idea of an example of what is being done in Florida about with the citrus as it is not still solved they plant a smart tree and what they do is planting everything in a covert area that's the whole way the only way of protecting from the winter so 
it's a big investment because the citrus costs a lot. And they are doing that in Florida as an agriculture alternative. It's the only way they have to survive. So let's talk about this final part of the two actions we have. This is a chart that Eduardo gave us, and thank you so much. And here he brought this very known part, and on the bottom you see lots of rootstocks we have. I'm not going to talk about that. And only this is the main part, as I was saying, for us to have rootstocks to have an evaluation experience and I want to tell Embrapa that they did an amazing work that it's been there for more than 10 years. It's one of the best standards on the right. And now I will explain about the new models. Let's compare some pictures that we took in April in Cambodia. Let's see, look at the look at the tree that I've mentioned, the size of the crown that it had that it had and it has now. And we will see an example of those implications regarding the size of the crown. That's that many of you have known it. And as we have this innovation, it's important to the change. And I will skip this one because Frederico has already mentioned. There is some data that were compared. There is something big here, which is five uh, cube square meters and then we have 10,000 below this is the efficiency of production we have 10 we have here 10,900 uh, cubic squares and then when we were comparing them the crown of the smallest tree has a very good efficiency because it can reach the whole crown and it can get the nu nutrients. So let's go to Spain now and let's let's we have to think of this citriculture. And Francisco, you will speak a little bit more about it. This is an example that how the citriculture was, and this is the basis of it of the current citriculture of Spain. The crowns are five meters tall. And this is, this, is, this is the example that we have, the manual pruning. They are not big crowns, as you see, they are oranges. But this is a very important period. And uh, as we've been doing this kind, but uh, we have this, actually we have this manpower issue and we will use only the parts that are on the, on the floor because they don't want the risk of losing it. To see how it will be a problem for the harvesters because they don't want to get the stairs. There is a risk and that's what's that's what uh, that's the kind of pruning in big trees this is be manual this is a very broad crown of five meters H here you can see the lines this is uh, th this machine is a very famous one there in Spain there is a space between those trees and you have the upper uh, upper part here there is the now it's like doing on the top it's uh, it's after the harvesting now it's in on the side it's the same it's the same berry just changes the position from the top to the bottle with the same machine it's doing the bottle 
It's the same barrier, the same bar for all of the process. As you see, it's not a big machine. And don't be afraid of pruning the crowns. Maybe it's the first time you do it. We've, we 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 reduce the size of the of the trees and there will be no issue it's the first it's the first thing that we have to do now we have the reduction for the industry itself that's what we've been doing I believe that those projects are very interesting to be told as we have here in Brapa, as we also have the, the others that think to them we have innovation, evaluation and data. And this is a common interest. Let's go here to the bottom of this table. We have here those numbers those data and I will speak a little bit of this topic and that's the change that uh, we've had like seven seven times six that's the change and now we have 15 trees per hectare that's a high density time. The evaluation here, I don't know which variety it was. This was the change. What has changed? Everything. It's a, it was a 5 meter crown and now it's 3.5. Those are the changes. This is the dimension that we have. That is 4.1. That's how we work. It's a big volume of crowns for 7,000 hectares. So now we have reduced the crown to 6,000, so three times less. So this is the example of uh, density planting with 33 tons per hectare. And as you can see, it how it works, how it was in, 19, in 2019. In, I, actually in 2021 and then in 2022 and now in the third year in the fourth year it will be much better those who are the data that I would like to share with you those are here we have the machine this is the for the mold which is the most known machine in Spain it's also used for the olives it's the model is 11.90. I know the mouth is bigger. Here, that's the unloading of the citrus. We always do this for the industry. This is a bigger model. In the 6430, we've done lots of tests in Spain with those machines uh, so we know how to handle them there is no there are no surprise here we have those varieties of using it this is the first option let's see the second one here we are doing the pruning of the trees we are doing first we do the sides and then the top it's very fast. So that's what you saw when you were in Spain last year. It has the tilting. It can be on one side, on the other. It's, uh, it goes three kilometers per hour now we have the spraying on those small trees it's very efficient and then we have two towers and you see that we can go to the next side here you see that there is a, a change but uh, 
look at how the spraying is. It's efficient. That's uh, it's very efficient, efficient in our treatment. And you know that in Spain, 90 percent of the citrus go to like go to the fresh. We pick it up the fruits manually. It's a very important advantage. We had, uh, it was like five cents of euros, almost half of the harvesting. And how do we do it? We manage it, it from, the, from the soil, then we have a cut. We have to take scissors. See, look at how fast they are. 300 kilos per hour. If you you can have the pellets in case you want to enhance the process. So look at how they do it. If there was a bench here, they could sit down. And they're not tired. They don't get tired because if it was, if they if they had to pick it up from the top, it would be worse. This is a high density. The orange is perfect. There is no damage. So that's how the orange. That's what it looks like. Look. You don't need to go upstairs. You don't need to like to go to the top and then the production doubles. This is the third year of this process. And look at these paces. We can see the trees through the whole process. Let's go to the second option. We've, uh, we've mentioned the small one. And the last one will be the model of uh, medium density. I will give an example of what we've been doing. They are far from like five to three. In this case, it was a very poor soil, and that's why the portanger that was put here was citrumelo. Those are the best ones that we have, this production of mid density, which means that the last, in the last year we had to reduce a little because of the drought, but we could have 41 tons, as you see here. And this is a little bit broader. It's a very interesting system. We have from the from the high to the mid density, as you see, they do the harvesting in a very easy way. That's the model that I have mentioned. Everything is mechanized, and it's very important to have those root stocks, as you see here in this picture. We, if the, the soil is good and irrigated, you can work in a better way. There is a balance in this process. Those are the models, and now I'll go to the end. We, I still have some minutes left, and I will tell you how the future will be how we see it from technology. I believe that this is a very interesting picture. I like it a lot. I'm sure that uh, it will be very efficient with, I mean, in the first picture, it will not be efficient. You have a canopy of a tree that uh, it's a smaller tree, but it will be on the top. Can you see the projection of a broad canopy, a smaller one? And look, we work with a canopy of 30 centimeters. We don't want something longer than that. We, we, we Doing the way we've been doing, we can keep it quality. And this is our future because it will enable us to be much more efficient. This is the measure here is one meter. We have one meter on each side. It's the idea is to work on two 
meters. That's what we do with the apples. We can scan the canopy and it will show the potential that we have for each line, for each hectare, for each tree. And it's very important for a big company, especially for the harvesting, to measure the kilos and it will be done automatically. And for the next treatments, it will be much better. I will gain the canopy as you, you have seen here. You have, for example, for me, it's a very important advance. We have a better production, as you see. It is much more accessible. And then our next speaker will bring other examples. Here is in Chile and now Italy. It, this company has been in Spain for 15 years. 15 days it's very complex to pick it up the apples and uh, it's still something new and it, even though it's something new but it's very important which means that the canopies are flat and those are visible fruits this is what uh, that's what this company has and uh, maybe oh, I will have this prototype for the future. And, and we are thinking a little for, imagine, citrus. What, it, what comes from this company? So you will see how they will cut that. And you will say, well, this is in development and there, was, there will be a solution, of course. This is the theme we have here, but a company that has more worked on that has worked the most. I believe they are working at Washington, in Washington, which is the advanced farm. They have a very important speed of harvest. It is a very important prototype, which is the same that we have from the cherries, and it allows you to work horizontally for cherry and vertical for apple so this for the citrus you have to see how how fast it is it will harvest three apples per second and you will see again they are, they are very very uh, plain for you to see how efficient they need to be this is a very advanced technology and soon later will be available for apple trees and also for this, the citrus growers as well. It works very well during the day, during the night. For example, they have, it has eight arms. Each side, it is the most advanced model. And I would say that the advanced farm is. This is from this Californian company. So I'm heading to the end and I'm going I'm going to bring a final reflection. I only have 2 minutes and I I think they are these are important reflections. So think about what was explained in the presentation with the slides. You have three things: knowledge, innovation and sustainability. Do you agree? So see it is extremely important having this. Where were we uh, in the pre industrial area? And we can, we are talking about an agriculture that hasn't changed nothing for during 1,000 years. Then we have the Green Revolution, which is the farm industry. Here you can see better. I don't know if I had the luck of um, meeting a Nobel Prize of Fowl which f then we had the second grain revolution and we have assumptions, inputs and inputs. It used the intensive of uh, Kutch Europe and it wasn't allowed completely. In Europe we are hearing the grain pact which will be obliged to produce 30% of the, the assumptions in fruits and citrus. So that's the reason we are in the next step. I need to explain here better. It is a sustainable intensification. And what is the base here? 
and as Eduardo was saying, it is based on knowledge, technology and innovation. I believe that this is the future. So see here that the sustainable development, we need to do more with less. However, to be able to do that, I will bring you uh, an example of a citrus. You have a gi uh, giant one and a small one. Which one requires more technology? The intense planting, of course. I always say that the planting closed for more than one year, 300, 400, 300, 400 per hour. Who knows how to, to drive a Ferrari here? So pilot, uh, driving this kind of planting requires lots of technology, genetics, data. So, however, I am convinced that the step is per cycle and then we can do more permissive. And I said and I repeat, there is no sustainability without intensification and neither sustainability with citra culture. And I will, con I will wrap up here. I will be really brief. I had I have 29 seconds only. Okay, you will be able to see which the intention we have, which is very simple. And I believe that one sentence that you can use uh, is if it is already here, you can see only with small trees the citric culture can be efficient. And together we can do it. This has been already said today. Previously, together with Embrapa, Fungi Citrus, producers and companies, t technicians, this is the future. And I, I am sure that talking about efficiency is the future, and together we can do it. And I greet Fungi Citrus for something which is very nice, with lots of technology, with lots of science being transferred for the future. This is the future of citric culture. I hope in 120 years this will be a definite step for the future. Thank you so much. I'm over with my time. Thank you. Thank you so much. We keep going with... We have one more international speaker. Also comes from Spain. We will receive here on stage Francisco Arenas, who represents the Andaluz and Agraria Pesqueira for food and ecological food. Francisco Arenas is technician engineer for Sevilla University in Agronomus for the Cordoba in Spain. He, he has master from the Polytechnic University of Valencia and has a doctor in agricultural engineering from the University of Sevilla. Since 2005, has been an employee of EFAPA and since 2008, has been a specialist technician in citrus. Since 2018, he has been a senior researcher at the Institute, where he also works as a director of the centers of Las Torres, Los Palacios and Palma de Rio. Francisco, welcome. Feel free. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Me escutam, sim, perfeito. Muito obrigado a Fundo Citrus pelo convite de estar aqui no dia de hoje. É uma honra para mim estar aqui. The citric cultures, which are more very important, and we have lots of information to be shared. The idea is sharing this, which was de developed during these 10 years in Spain. In first of all. I would like to say that citric culture in Spain has a very distinct objective from Brazil. We are not the main producers, but we are the main exporters of orange in the whole world. We export almost 3 million of tons per, per, per year. We are in the main European market. And of course, there is a very important advantage. We have the possibility of working together for your technology or methods and to be able to work uh, together with the vector, which is today in Apple. And we have the vector in the zone of Cyprus and Israel, which concerns us even more. So the opportunity of being here with you and learning what you are developing during a resistant plant. And plants that will repel this vector. The Spanish citric culture wasn't, has never been so easy. It is important to learn about the history, to be able to learn about the future, to know what we have to face, which challenges. 
we suffer something as you in the 50s opening the market reminding that Spain was in a dictatorship we couldn't cut anything only oranges and the tourism was coming to us so what came from abroad in a personal view were the in, uh, internal sales in the 50s my family put that in the 55 we saw the virus as Giuliano said it is important for you to know our difficulties he triggered that this expansion stopped and that 50 million of trees would be taken out in the years 1970 so the citric the spanish citric culture died so we we did uh, the rootstock the milestone of importation we do 27 percent of of that production we made the rootstock of Riverside. We had the trier, Capriz. We did the many things in the, in Spain, and proving that the standards were linked to the a distinct milestone. They were completely different, as I I told you, for you to be able to see through the difficulty. We were much more strong, and we did what we didn't do in the last fifty years. We do now. The citric culture is uh, an agriculture where we have lemons, tangerines, lots of exportation, and we also have the roots like adapted to the to the environment. And fortunately, the diseases are isolated. Brazilian citric culture has a big challenge, which is attacking this problem. But tech moon, tech moon, the world agriculture bring that we have depending on the agriculture we can do everything so this thing i mentioned for you before is the foul uh report which was responsible it, it was under the responsibility of brazilian and he said saying there will be an increment of the demand of the uh, food implementation you see the price of food increasing a lot during the last years with more competition competition by resources the changes we have there is a drought and more important during the last 10 15 years we have had a three years of a very big drought and other pests and diseases that arrive because of the globalization we have to make it more intensive more productive and with less dependence on products and chemical in, uh, inputs in order to be more sustainable and intensify production. What I was saying was said by the FAO uh, general director. He was director during 2000 to 2019. He said we have to to produce more for more people with a cheaper work and doing that uh, in a more efficient, efficient, efficient way. And he said this this 10 years ago and we see even more this in world agriculture our problems are uh, climate changing costs of products and energy and also for the price and all the products we sell so agriculture is going to to face another green revolution and the future of agriculture is is under the use of assumptions and knowledge as well and this knowledge to be shared for us to use it efficiently we are in a world globalized world and what we have done in spain i will tell you this was my grandpa model so trees eight meters tall with ladders of eight meters of course of, it, of course the safety of the worker wasn't taking into taken into account but it was efficient and they were removing the oranges with horses because of the unhappiness, they suffered this change. If they weren't unhappy, we wouldn't have that probably. So during the last 10, 15 years, because of the price of the orange, they saw the possibility of getting into the industry of juice. Of course, in Brazil, the price is extremely different and we cannot fight against Brazil. So we saw uh, models of high density and the, the cheaper mechanization. And we see the possibility of the platform to use this platform in Spain we have do we need to have a geography a very variable soil in the time of harvesting is not autumn and winter during the the where when it's not raining 
we did some proofs in Welva between two, uh, two, uh, two, 2007 and 2008, and we saw the possibilities of using equipment in order to harvest faster. And because of the development of Spain, because of the technology we have for the olive trees and also the almonds, the problem we have is that it damages a lot in the cortex of the tree and can also in the radicular system can be damaged. And that's the same problems we have in the olive trees today. We have started working with lots of teams. A Spanish company has acquired lots of American machines, also from Argentina, to do this high-density work in some places of Portugal and Sevilla. We had two models for Orange for the industry, and uh, there was a risk percentage, percentage that didn't reach the 85 percent and the trees were not adapted it couldn't uh, be uh, mechanical harvesting and in some uh, crops they couldn't be able to get into those places and uh, we had those machines and trucks, but they weren't able to get to this territory. The, this model here was discarded. Maybe this model can be useful for you according to your technology or typology, but for us it wasn't. This was the planting from the 40s to the 80s, very tall trees. And then we change it to a standard model. And today, as you see, we have the last picture. But in the second one, you see those kinds of trees. We had the COVID. Many workers were afraid of working. They didn't want to take their stairs anymore because the trees were very tall. And what? What are we doing? We are reducing the, the height of the trees because we don't have manpower. And what did we do in 2010? I had a meeting with Gran Torre, who is a very important person, and we saw this possibility of mechanizing this intent and doing this model of intensity for the olives, the same as we did for the olives. And uh, we had this linear model, and we started that we started doing tests in Cordoba, we had some partnerships, and uh, we, we used the same machine that we used for the olives and grapes, and we used here. And we had the first mechan mechanized harvesting in this plant. What were the advantages of this intensification? We had a better quality production, but some of them could be, some were small in the beginning, some of the fruits, but then they got bigger according to, to the time. And we also had a reduction in the costs of uh, pruning and the also the reduction of some chemical products. And as Inácio said, we had the sustainable intensification. When we get used to this, it's possible to have a reduction of costs, and then we would have the reduction of disease, of fungicide. So it's very, very important. We had a better production with a lower cost. And we also have the pruning here. And the mechanization is very important because it has three important things here for this sustainable way. And what are the advantages? If you have apples, the root stocks, we have 
developed several rootstocks, our partner from Embrapa has seen that. But in the Spanish citriculture, we also have it. And then we, in the, we have reduced the canopy and it's from 500 trees per hectare and now we have a lower number we have this standard root stock that is like 4 to 4.5 meters the sam one the semi dwarf and the smallest one we have also some activities that are those smaller trees. We have a complete line, as you see here in this picture. We also have new things that have been embedded here. And we also have the Incebat. We have started working with those models. We didn't know anything, the typology of the plant, and in the beginning, it was something very intense. I know that our friend from Embrapa has had lots of issues to have a flat screen without production. This model was adapted little by little. And the variety that can be grafted is better. We had lots of tests for the oranges, for the lemon trees, among others. Now we have a partner from Argentina who has information, has experience in it. And we were improving little by little with this high density for growing. And through those 10 years, we had this mechanical technology. We evaluated this in the plant, in the fruit, and also for the future harvestings <laughs> we have here the some samples we had some uh, samples of comparison we have it this power we've been harvesting 25 percent of the fruit one part at the bottom and the other at the top on the top and uh, we've always had an efficiency of 80 to 85 percent and some of them aren't harvested because the trees are very low we've eliminated with those uh, prunings some of the issues and the shape of it is small that is developed by aglomoda and it is like from 70 to 80 centi centimeters it's a very easy plant to be multiplied, to be transported, and to be implanted. Here you have some uh, r rootstocks models. This one is one, uh, 418, the one that uh, we started with. But uh, some of the plants died, but not because of the region but because of the disease. So we ruled out the conditions of the, of the region. So maybe it's something that is important here in Brazil. They are small, but they maybe they can be useful here. And what kind of root stock are we using? This one, this al alkyde number five, and the one that is 517, we had the reduction of this canopy for this high density that we wanted to develop this foreigner that's the model the foreigner which is the the last generation and it, it needs the sadness again it's really it's very it also it's very powerful it's a standard the, we have the last one, which is the flying dragon, and it doesn't work for this region because uh, it's a very high place, so we can do it. In general, those are the results. We have uh, all those places, Cordoba, Sevilla, and uh, they've been using in a high density way also mechanized the pruning high density 
uh, they are straighter and it's very important to, if we have, for example, a Valencia kind, it can be vigorous and it will make the harvesting harder for the Valencia. We also have uh, a bigger production per hect hectare and also per tree. And what kind of issues do we have for the harvesting? Sometimes we have the resistance of the fruits. Some of them don't grow. And this is a difficulty that we have in Spain. For example, from May to June, if, the, if it is a late harvesting. And in July, we have an early harvesting. And then these two issues, we can have it damage. These are other models that we've developed. En cuanto a, a las producciones medias, pues, como decía, mayor número de plantas. This average production, as you see here in the picture, we have small productions from five to eight thousands, and then second year, actually, this is the second year, in the third year, ten thousand to twelve, and then in the fourth, twenty-five to third, and in the fifth year, we have forty more than forty-five kilos per hectare, 45,000 kilos per hectare. And what we have today is a milestone for the plantation. We recommend from four per 1.5, actually from 3.5 to 4.0 with a height of 1.5 meters. If we have to do it manually, it would be around one to two meters but we still have to increase 0 0.6 from the from the soil and then on the top it has to be three times in the first year the the side the pruning usually is done only once in the spring And the important uh, planting, as you see here, we have the other techniques that are recommended. So then it can be dragged by the machine. We also use the line. We have the lack of water. And then we have, uh, for this consumption that is necessary, we use the big machine, the big and uh, with the potential of those machines they work pretty well they are very efficient in this harvesting and uh, we are almost reaching the 90 percent they don't damage the tree and the efficiency is very good too with the 430 revolutions per minute and 2.5 kilometers per hour and the harvesting is done is done like for is, is one hour per hectare and they get to places that are more difficult because of the geography the advantages are the pruning the reduction of maintenance better costs for the harvesting nutritional treatment as they are available in those uh, territories for like example for olives and among other products and then a person who is in charge of the machine is able to get to that place and do what is necessary and the current trend is to take a mixed system for the industry for the spanish in industry you take a manual harvesting first and afterward you you do it for the industry the model is the one that you see here the manual manual when we have our october and the november that's our fall and we would pick it up 
according to the color quantity and then in January February we would have uh, a bigger number the price for the manual harvesting is five five cents euros so it's for the next year we will have a better quality and then we'll be able to do it mechanically we have here an overview of the costs of production and the also people who are available especially in the old plants or or groves it's not the price is not the is not an issue but the issue here is the like the manpower because it's very hard to find the people to work on it and uh, we have this change here and uh, we and the price as we can say that when we do it in a mixed way the 60 cents the quality of the fruit will be we will we will, could be picked up by half of the way the line is different here for the vegetal material that's why we've been working on this material to have some improvements to recognize in future problems in new pests and for this we have a system of selection of materials of and we are testing many other system and uh, phytoptera and nematos and other ones these are factors that have affect the cycle of culture and they are provided by center of researches and we collaborate with agromilora which use the materials and provide them for the culture in vitro in the last four years we have accessed different rootstocks and we have all the public data and information which are available for the sector and we did 28 investigations about this these are the rootstocks that we have seen in Spain and they are used in the American citric cultures in Florida which has had a nice behavior for for these connections and for the Mediterranean Mediterranean connection and using these materials for the the trees latte in Lules. The future of citric culture as we see in Spain we need to have a knowledge an accurate knowledge of the tree in the movement of the tree on the plant and we have to have an intensive knowledge and we need to develop tools that allow us to adapt to the intensive knowledge we need to know very well our hydric uh, state of the roots to use the water in during the drought and also the use of uh, fertilizers for that we need to to know the fertilizers which are available We also have been developing this subject of the culture rotation. The colleague from Embrapa was saying that the culture rotation is very important, is fundamental for the behavior of the psyllid. And with, all th with other pests such as the Pugões and Bahamador and Minador, how can we avoid to do many treatments, avoiding that the plant will use that and one interesting tool for that is working with the mechanized prunings and densities also working with uh, 
using and allowing the avoidance of the of increasing the fruit this is used especially in tangerines and allowing the augmentation of the fruit and for the fruit not to drop on the floor we have also seen that we can produce a rotation in one or about 40 percent and we reduced this 40 percent the incidence of the vector of other pests that affected the trees the young trees The results that we got also we can get with higher reproductions and after that we can have a higher rotation. This way this can improve the transmission of the disease through the vector. It is interesting the subject of the pruning because it produces about it produces one drop in the production. So it is needed to use prunings, alternative prunings to keep uh, more constant productions. We work with alternative prunings during the last four years, and now we are in a drought season with low production. But we can say that the pruning with different alter alternative years and through rows work very well. More technology that we can apport in the future, monitoring electronically. This currently, we can monitor a pest and we need the technician to uh, move to go many kilometers to verify where this pest is coming from. It is possible to put these stations with chambers to monitor those pests. They need to have a digital computer for for example to be able to dimension the the black spot, the white spot, and the pool coins. Another interesting model is the subject of the ap applying with sensors, which will apply if there is a canopy or not, if there is a small tree or not, in order to see if they have a tree with a big canopy and able to uh, increase the, the spraying and this also allows a reduction in the production of phytosanitary products this can be seen in the lands of investigation the fields of investigation of Andalusia Fungi Citrus our, com our company in the world shows the results and I will show you a video now. This is in Sevilla, in the center. I invite you to know it. And you have information about the model that we have developed. Currently, we have done some journeys where we tell what we have developed. In this case, one researcher of the University of Florida, and after that we have visited another place where we do the studies, the researches, and we also show some models, which are very interesting for Brazilian citric culture as well for the Spanish one.
la, la recolección hacemos el proceso completo. Pasamos la poda al topping. The harvest también poda lateral en is the complete process where we do this pruning on the top of this as well in by the side. We also do the the harvest and do we do a demonstration on, on place in local and after the pruning some teams will see will go by to spray and after that we apply the prod the pesticides the insecticides I'm sorry in the in the places around here you can see the sprayer opening the the, the beaks for the according to the size of the the canopy you see the monitoring of water here y este año próximo en se celebra el 31 de enero next year en el cual estáis todos invitados espero veros por sevilla y en 31 of january of 24 we will the uh, evaluate that and you are invited and to wrap up the citric culture needs to go further and many times we advance making mistakes but this collaboration is very important the collaboration is very important to be able to get a, a citric culture 5.0 the, the 21st century citric culture thank you so much and i hope to see you in spain Francisco, muchas gracias por Thank esa you so much for all your contributions. We are wrapping up the first part, our first panel. Now we are going to open the round table for everything that was pointed out here, all the important themes that were brought uh, to discussion. They can be discussed, debated, and for your questions to be answered. Probably we won't be able to answer all of them. But I imagine that a communication team of Funde Citrus later on will make it available, these answers on YouTube channel. And as a person who's a not technician, some terms caught my attention during this morning. And I think they are very expensive themes for you in the sector of citric culture, which is innovation, competit competitiveness, sustainability, optimization of processes. You have the me mechanization being put there, the automation of all these processes. We have important parts for the development of the sector themes that will be that will still be discussed here at the end of this round table we'll have a stop for the brunch and we'll return in the afternoon with more speeches with international speakers to bring their contribution for our discussion and for the development of this knowledge that is the great objective of this symposium as I said here which is the exchange of knowledge and the enhancement of the techniques of processes and the quality of the fruits we have uh, making available and offering not only for Brazil but for the whole world I will call again the speakers of this morning. We are just waiting, just preparing the space for them to be very comfortable to answer your questions. And we will bring them back for them to be able to open the first round table of this symposium. So please, Inácio Iglesias, Francisco Arena, Eduardo Girardi, Renato Bassanese, and Juliano Aires, take your seat, please. Before we start, there was a question that which was very interesting. Our colleague Joaquim, why? Why is the event being held here in Araraquara? And I said it's because of Mr. Jacques. He chose 
the plant in 1963, and now it's the core of our orange. And uh, his wife asked, and I said, oh, it's because of uh, the engineer who chose everything. And we are thrilled for everything he has done. He's a fantastic person. And his biggest dream, he is 94 years old, 94, is to grow orange again. And uh, he's, he's always asking, when? When are we going to grow oranges again? So just to share with you about this person who is very optimistic and has a very, very warm heart. And uh, we had a delay here. And uh, our head here is Marcelis Cabin, who's been working with the staff in the organization. And uh, he asked us to do it in 15 minutes, not to delay. And then we reduce our lunch and be on time. And sometimes, actually, in the afternoon period, our presentations will be shorter. So now, I will start here, and uh, because uh, you are more rested, then I will start here with the first question. The green is a disease that is is very difficult to control, and even though there was a control, it would be be very challenging because of those varieties facing those obstacles. How do you see the citriculture in the next two decades? What is the most feasible way for that? Renato, please, can you answer? So the citriculture will change. It will have to learn. We'll have to, to live with the greening. I know it's not peaceful. We, ha we have seen lots of things in Florida, for example, but if we don't have a product that will be able to keep the production with the greening, the production will be lower, and even the grow the orchards will be hard to be renewed. And the industry itself will start uh, moving. In Brazil, we have a very large extension, even here in the state of Sao Paulo, where we grow, grow the citrus. And in other states, the citrus culture will have to do something. That's how I say citriculture is resilient. The, it will go to other places. The citriculture will advance and the research will bring us some answers in medium and long term. So we need this transition because uh, this management of the prevention is very important to keep those areas. So that's how I see the citriculture in the next years. We have to have this movement to have this efficiency in production. Let me make a comment here. Every new issue, there is a learning curve. When we we had the green in 2004, we didn't even know how to deal with the sealant. We didn't know the effect of climate, everything. The CVC, we didn't know what to do with it. The disease was in 46%. The citrus grower, the Brazilian one, is a pioneer because they always reinvent themselves. So what do I believe? We will use this critical mass to do this crossing, to choose the places, keeping what we have until we have an enduring solution. In, fo in Florida, there is no crossing. You either have the resistant plant or nothing. We, they don't have a uh, curing product. We have to forget this silver bullet in short term, and we just have to be aware of what we have to do. We have to handle it very well. We have to choose the area, work together. Maybe now with this development of the state, we'll have a more effective Effective measure, and we will go ahead. 
the the levels that we've had in, we've ne we've never had this level we always have risk and the opportunity and just to add here is something the future will depend on your actions it will depend on the researchers the producers of what they do in their orchards of will depend on the government on the input sales people so if you do whatever you do to contribute to improve the greening of course that we will have something that will be much better another comment here is that the this greening issue is the most serious problem that the citriculture has faced not everything can be solved with money to solve this we have the we need to have the best minds focused on it and we have the best people here searching for something that will be resistant we will have a solution but we need time to remember we had the covid there there was three trillion dollars actually yeah dollars invested in it and we didn't have the drug so i'm very happy that in this at this time of uncertainties we have an auditorium with almost 500 people showing that you believe in it you will not give it up another question for Inas and francisco that is from van der clay rodriguez with the mechanized harvesting will the next flowers be committed So, with, with the me mechanical harvesting, how will the next harvestings be? It depends on the moment of it. Sometimes it is compromised, but it can be done when the fruit, I think that to mechanize this culture has to be, we need to have, uh, we need to have something better. It's something very important to concentrate the harvesting to have some to to be able to mechanize this in the future yesterday that all the others so it's the all this will be concentrated on this bigger production and there will be machine and these will make the harvesting cheaper after the harvesting and with those investigations how will they be affected will will there the mechanical harvesting can damage the the blossoms if if the fruit has the size of a saddling before that there is no damage just one more comment here as it happened with the olive there are some varieties that are better in the future we will be able to understand which one is better but there is an effect of this variety of this flowering and the, the experience will probably help us in the future for example for the lower vera adapts very well to it but we still need to study it just to help a little bit more and con contextualize we will have this variety of irrigation and uh, we will have uh, a unique flowering the fruit is affected when it has the size of when it's 
is smaller than a coin. When it's bigger than a coin, then there is no problem for this machine. There are no effects. All the ex all the experiments they had, all the all the errors that have been had the pruning by machines. So Guilherme Rodrigues asks, can can the like the root stock seems seem to have better results, especially for the semi and the dwarf ones. So what is the importance of the use of this material? And uh, what would the, the size of a farm be with those new root stalks? The semi-dwarf one, dwarf ones show this because they are intermediate size the plants and they are closer to the to what the citrus growers are used to and the possibility is mild in those spaces where they are already they they happen already it's easier to adopt that's why i made the comment of going down the stairs like step by step they will be easily adopted because the, there is a less need of adjustment. However, there is a reduction of volume, which is intermediate. To walk through those rude stocks or even to, to use the flying dragon that is an old material, those are smaller plants and the open possibilities, broader possibilities, the adjustments will be bigger. As they have said, the involved the technology, no, technology, knowledge, intensification will be bigger. You need more density, irrigation, better good practices. And they are in development today. The use of those technologies can have it to be little by little. We can't evaluate the conditions of the climate, the commercial canopies. Some have more knowledge and the others have less. It's interesting for the citrus grower to evaluate more, even more and more. The risk is something that has to be checked for one kind of uh, past is like a little bit more or or less some uh, some of them are reasonable so we need to to check the importance of it even in other countries such as spain that has been working on centrus for 20 years it is still not predominant but uh, it has been growing year by year and we will go through a transition of 10, 15 years, so then those new varieties will be used in a broader way. Thank you. Juliana and Renato, Aline Alves asks you, is there any study, any ongoing study for those kinds of plants that can be, can be damaging? For the, the psyllid has one one uh, plant which it has one pest which is the myrtle and the increase of psyllid it doesn't have anything to do with the place where it is being produced it has the same insect sites and the psyllid chooses the resistance and it can be more controlled Besides that, as we have already said, the profile of those plantations in the state of Sao Paulo have changed. We had the rain period where we had this we we had this blossoming period which was different from what we have this sprouting period that was different from what we have today and they were not controlled by the insect sites and now they are Renato just to emph emphasize here everyone has the feeling that the the psyllid population has grown 
And it's not only a feeling, it's real. It's five times more than what we had in the past. And when it happens, it's not only one factor, it's a sum up of factors. We had two years where the climate was favorable. We had a resistant sealant in some parts with three molecules. Two are in some situations. The number of plants that have more incidence for the disease, and there is a very new study showing that the psyllid that is contaminated will, it migrates more. The behavior of the insect has changed too. So we have been leading with another insect, a selection of psyllid, which is resistant to some molecules, and they have the capacity of reproducing more and migrating more. And we will need to put our intelligence to be adjusted to this system. That's the reason that it's important this work to, to be coordinated in group, not individualized. Gerard, to wrap up, Gustavo Cicchetti asks you, how is it the development of the radicular system of the dwarf plants? Is it lesser than the rigorous? In general, the plant has what we call functional balance. It means that what we see from the areas part, you have a proportion with the radicular system, which means that a vigorous canopy, big one, is associated to a radicular system which is deep and extends. And this is also linked not only to hormonal balance and ge uh, genetic characteristic, but also with dry tolerance, the capacity of absorbing the water, capacity of surviving to periods of drought, which are longer. So in general, these uh, dwarf rootstocks, they have these characteristics, having this radicular system less deeper this is uh, more in the fly dragon triflorata. And this explains in part why these plants are more sensible to droughts and consequently demand ir irrigation. Nowadays, you have this new hybrid which you cross this triflorata in the flying dragon itself with kinds of ci citrus during the, the drought, such as the tangerina. Dr. Arenas talk about Cleopatra, Sunk, and the others. For you to try to to confer characteristic of mutual resistance. So one of them present a uh, radicular system which are more f efficient. We are studying a lot by the Embrapa group. And not only to the point of allowing the, the um, cultivation of the, the upland, I see even more that these rootstocks more dwarf will, one of the, the steps to make it available are the adoption of the irrigation in a best way possible, more efficient possible. But for the irrigation to, ha to help in, in its productivity. Thank you, Girardi. Thank you all for clarifying everything. And to answering the questions and for our audience, thank you for your participation in this first part in our symposium, the new citriculture systems of production and automation of citrus. We'll have a break now of a brunch of one hour on RN15 and we will return for next part of our discussion. See you soon. Hello again, good afternoon now to everyone. I will kindly ask you to take your seat for us to get started in this second part of this international symposium of the new citriculture systems of production and automation of citrus. We will have more discussions during this afternoon such as it happened in the morning at the end of the speeches we will also have a round table now in the afternoon we will have seven speeches where we will talk about the automation of citrus we'll have a juice break about 15 305 and our round table is forecasted for about 5 p.m 
for us to wrap up all the discussions of this day, which is extremely important. I would like to invite now to our stage to start this afternoon works Efraim Albrecht, representing representative of Albrecht Self in Albrecht is an agronomist engineer from Wolfskar and Masters in Design and Development and Optimization of Machinery from the Faculty, uh, University of Agriculture and Engineering at Unicampi. Has a scope diploma equivalency programs by GED testing from the State University of New York. Among the main awards obtained, Efraim won the Forum of Business Leaders in 2011 by Gazeta Mercantile Journal and winner of Getulio Vargas Foundation's Digital Experience Challenge during the Digital Transformation Congress in 2019. Please come up to the stage in this speech. We will know a little bit better about the Colimais project, which is a improving manual harvest process and the search for mechanical solutions. Thank you, Daniela. Good afternoon, everyone. The first speaker after lunch there is also has a, a higher challenge because of the because of the content he will be putting and all the knowledge. And I am sure we will have a very nice afternoon, such as we had in the morning. My challenge now is talking about the Columize project. As a project, in, re in reality, this is an initiative that we have of the Funde Citrus together with AgriSafi, which aims treating about the me uh, mechanized harvesting. Okay, it was off. Now, Kalimais project is an initiative of Funde Citrus, and the objective is conducing the development of citrus harvesting. It was already said about harvesting and the challenges we have ahead. Juliano presented very well the uniformity we have in the groves. So I would like to put a, a current scenario for you to visualize regarding to what we have in Brazil. First uh, highlight I would like to put here is that for us to be able to produce in the biggest part of, of the year, we have many varieties let's say in one third of each the early mid season and late just because of the varieties being there in the groves we have a uh, difficulty thinking about the the harvesting it, we asked a question when we were having the round table about the impact of the machine thinking about the flowering and the smaller fruits and this graph showing a little bit of the varieties shows the challenges we have ahead other challenge we have thinking about the harvesting is the number of jobs the number of employees that are available for to harvest nowadays we have about 200,000 yeah, 200,000 uh, jobs considering all the scenario of uh, orange harvesting this is about one person for each 10 he hectares about 8.6 hectares so considering the variety and this challenge we have to these workplaces we have a challenge thinking about the harvesting of citrus and how can we overcome this challenge we talked about a lot of greening and about the future that we have ahead we are talking about the new citric culture in as you pre pre presented several systems options of processes that are being done abroad but as for the citrus we believe that to overcome this challenge we have to think differently we have to innovate he talk about innovation sustainability and economic part as well thinking about this part of innovation we have a model that has always been used that we are calling the closed innovation and the other model which is being placed on your right as we call uh, open innovation this concept was proposed by this author she's brought where he considers that thinking about an innov innovation about doing something different we have to count on a participation that goes beyond probably of what we has uh, we have always treated 
regarding company, organizations, and so on. So he proposes a model where you have partic external participations with uh, collaborators or other people. And, and with this model, beyond the main delivery for the market, it will deliver other alternative products, other solutions. In this line, I will start this first speech now in the, se the second period of our symposium, talking about what Fundo Citrus has prepared, thinking about new agriculture, new citriculture, and which is the state we have now. So we need to think in the new citriculture, but considering that we are in the in present now. And for us to be here, we had groves that are already implemented, we have validated techniques, and we have to think in the future considering the present. So talking about this open innovation, another concept which is related is the ecosystem of innovation. So we have to think that according to this author, we have actor activities, artifacts, several systems working. And with these systems working, we will be able to get to an innovation, whether it is a, gr a solution for greening or a solution for harvesting. And a, as we develop other limitations, we will have. So outside the, this uh, introduction, the objective of this Colimais is increasing the yield of the harvesting. This is our focus. How can we increase the yield of the harvesting? So for us to be able to get this, to achieve this goal, the first step we took as an institution, as a Funde Citrus, was settling a workforce, a work group. So around March, April of this year, we made a group of work where people from many companies, many sectors have participated aiming with the, the objective of having a multidisciplinary team and through this team we could be able to update different companies, organizations of what we have done in this project of Colimais. Beyond that, through this work, we we'll defined what, what would be the best practices thinking about the harvesting of the citrus. Now, talking about as a project of Colimais and thinking of what we have ahead, we separated in three fronts of uh, performance. First one is linked to manual harvesting. Remember, we said, well, we are in the present. So we have to see, we have to understand the new citric culture and how we're going to get there. And for this present, we need to consider the manual harvest. Uh, we cannot think about next week, month, la next month, thinking that we will have a new system and somehow we're not going to use this manual harvesting. Then we have the, the manual and friend three, which is a mechanized and we wouldn't need many people. We believe that there's a gap where we can work with the systems that will help this manual harvesting. So I'm calling here as the front two is a semi-mechanized harvesting. Inasu showed in his presentation a kind of a kind of platform where they had the objective of taking out some functions of this that uh, employees that would be going up and down the stairs. And what have we done as a project called my thinking on that open innovation, innovation ecosystems? And here the first speech after for you to have other speeches after that that we'll talk about other specific technologies. Thinking about a manual uh, harvesting, this is a f uh, flow chart that shows a little bit about the person who is in the field. When they are doing manual, they need to know if the bag is settled, he, he will need uh, stairs, if his bag is full, if the tree has fruits. So the inter interaction of uh, harvesting is where that person who is collecting there all the time needs to take decisions. And these decisions are important. Why? Because each time they take an assertive decision, they will increase their yield at the end of the day if they know that their bag is already settled and they go to the plant directly. He will get the time of going to the bag or doing something else and he will be producing more. Generally, what do we have? We have decisions where this person who is there, that person who is collecting, harvesting, harvester, is there and one of the focus is is for this manual harvesting is helping this harvester to take the most assertive decisions thinking on the increase of his yield 
For that, we identified the main focus. Who are them? The leaders. And that's where we are structuring our work. Let's talk about our work group a little bit. And this work group got together and started effectively working, thinking in the solution of increasing the yield of the harvesting manually. So we had a, meet a first meeting to elaborate a macro process. It means how is the process regarding to the harvesting in this meeting? We identified the causes that bring the, the decrease of income, the yield, and we also defined the critical processes. And for our surprise, in the meeting with all the people, people from all the companies representing the, uh, the sector managers of harvesting, we, we had a survey with them in the beginning of this meeting asking them which are the causes that affect more the yield of the, the harvesting. And this was the result we had. So even though we say that we have causes of yield because of the high of the plant and other things, we ha also have things that affect the, the yield of production, lack of material, many things. And we start understanding more the influences than influence the manual harvesting and decrease the yield of the harvester. Thinking about these causes of yield, we defined the macro process. Together with this group, we defined what would be a macro process representing the harvest, and this was defined in eight steps. Since the transport of the harvester, when he leaves his house, until the going to the to the plot and all the play, all everything, and he presented all the companies that were present, and it's part of this group work group, and when we start separating this. This step, we start performing on the specific problems that will affect the yield of the, the harvesters. After that, we had another workshop, which was to redefine which are the activities regarding the harvest. And we divided in groups that were working in, in stairs with four steps and bigger groups. And this way we could go f uh, uh, even further. We had a third meeting to talk about the attributions of the leader of harvest, the, the um, field fiscals, and we had some interesting results. About 17% of the activities regarding to the leader of harvest, they are done before his entrance in the farm. He needs to appoint out of things, he needs to pick uh, people things and at the the, um, the orchard block he needs to have all the activities done and for us as a project this person who is the leader of harvesting it was the point where he, we opted to direct our works after that we had another meeting which was to standardize this time the process of harvest so you see there an image of what to represent the process of harvesting daily basis in the farms, starting with the conference of the IPs and finishing at the moment when this hand harvester goes from his place to other place. We could treat all the points, thinking about improvement points and changes, aiming the increase of the harvester. So in this sequence of eight steps, main steps of the harvesting, we worked in the step five, which was harvesting. And another time as a work group, considering that concept of open uh, innovation, ecosystem of innovation, we could characterize step by step during the harvest. And here some of the companies started having some differentiators regarding the distribution of IPEs on how do they leave the bags, how do they go up in the stairs, how do they go down. And there is a work we have to find the process of the harvest. At last, after those four workshops, we had the launch of this project where we visited the companies. We have more than eight companies involved in this project where each one had a training and then we had the official launch of it. And now, 
in the in the middle of the last month uh, we deployed the the technique of uh, management which would be an option to start this this technique and then and uh, we took this to the field to implement in those companies where we've been working with. I don't know if you have, the, if you are aware of this kind of management, but uh, we started with an indicator that was the minimum and the maximum where each handy harvester would have in that, uh, in that team. In the same, we multiply by four the difference. The, for example, the one who, who picks more versus the one who picks less. So this one uh, picked it up 80, which was the least, and the other one uh, 240. So we had the minimum of 40 and the maximum of 160. And this kind of information is very important because the leader encourages the team and makes clear where everyone is related to the productivity. So if we imagine, if we think of the gain of this person who picked it up 80 versus the one who picked it up 160, we can see the gain that the second person had. And this is a very important factor when we think of this promise of uh, yield, this manual yield. And with this indicator of minimum and maximum, we've created another indicator, which is the goal, the target. What is the target for that day? Thinking of the conditions of the harvesting that those people will have. The target for each company has adopted a way maybe target is not the word maybe that would be average but some companies are have been working with the average in reais so i wanted to get x reais so i needed to produce x number of boxes so we have to we can't damage the limit that is 160 do you understand what it is to have a team that picks up four times more than the other? It would be very good if we had 240, but this difference of groups is something that we have noticed in those companies. We have to think of the yield of the ones who have been harvesting less, because if I double the, the the yield of the ones who are harvesting 240, it will grow the yield of this group. And now we have this front two, and I will share the actions that we've been doing, which is the mechanical action, is to work with a variation. It's a query where we consider the considering the harvesting without uh, stands so we will have bags in every line during the follow-ups that we had it's clear that the productivity time for this person to 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 go from one place to another and go under the trees and as you gave the example of going down like going up the stairs and going down when you have to for example leave the bus and go until the tree and then you have to get the empty bag and come to the place so those are improductive times and this yield could be much more efficient We've been scheduling this work, the machine to, for the feasibility of this study is already available. I think that we will start doing that by next week. We will start with the same group, picking them up with this bench and another one doing with it, one without and one with it. 
and there will be different spacings. There are several details that we have to take into account, but when we think of this concept of open innovation with this innovation system, we have to search for the potential, everything that is being right, and work together. Another evaluation that we have scheduled, it, wa it was supposed to be done some weeks ago, but we didn't have time to finish and bring the data, which is um, this harvester facilitator, facili facilitator. And it's one of the models that is available that we will test. Besides that model, we have some others that are in our radar. And the proposal here, actually the purpose is to understand how much the solution will increase the yield of those hand harvesters. And they will change this time when they have to go upstairs and go downstairs. But we know that there are some limitations because when you have a group together, remember that I said that some people pick 40 and the others 160. We have to understand how their compensation will be, how we'll manage those people who will be using that machine. Because when we put the productivity together, it's not possible to allocate one box for each person, maybe a set of bags. And the one, the person who does, who manages that in this field knows how hard it is. And when we think of those systems, they were previously tested at a time where there was an availability of manpower. We had the harvesters that were more experienced, ex that had more experience, taking into account this current scenario that we have this restriction of manpower. This kind of solution to increase the yield of people can be something interesting, thinking of bringing people from other areas to work with this harvesting process. And what is the, the proposal here? Is to compare an area to the standard harvesting, to the mixed harvesting and then we will have the number and be aware of how much we will be able to potentialize people and numbers and the last front here will be the mechanical harvesting today for the rest of our day there will be lots of speeches related to it and as you has already said but thinking of this performance this uh, orchestra of citrus, the development, this innovation for ecosystem. We've, we are also coordinating this part of test development. That is, we have to understand how we will get some options that are available in the market that would be the new citrus culture and bring those options to you, to the sector, somehow to use it by using them. You don't want to have a prototype. You want to have an invoice where you can buy the product and have someone working for you. So that's the proposal that we have. And thinking of open innovation ecosystem, we are, we've been working with universities. We've been in touch with some universities from abroad that have been working with some specific concepts. Most of, the, of them abroad have have just started the half half uh, half year in some uh, universities in the United States, New, Ze New Zealand. They have been already in touch with us to talk about it. Again, how can we have this open innovation? And to wrap up, thinking of this project of Ecolimais, what is the timeline that we have here? When we think of manual harvesting, we are here in the first phase, which is a definition, and also in item two, which is the deployment. So we've been taking several concepts, tools that are toward management. We've been deploying those tools in the field, and so that on, we will validate them to understand what kind of results they are 
giving us if they are increasing the yield of the harvesting and then at the end in item four we'll multiply those solutions and then we will disclose those results and now we have then we will have the the, the online uh, education with those platforms and we will have a complete a full platform where we will teach how to define the microprocess, the activities, how to define the management at insight to all the work that we've been doing in the harvesting. Then we'll put everything together, thinking of the disclosure and all the knowledge, all this process that has been generated will be spread to the sector as a whole. Maybe there will be a producer that has questions about the goal, about the target, the indicators, process. Our proposal here is to have this learning process with all kinds of information that is necessary. I would like to thank for the opportunity to be here talking to you and how the project with this project, we have lots of challenges ahead, but thinking of this concept of open innovation with lots of people working on it, with this goal to have the harvesting in a more feasible way and, the, and the, with the best people involved, I'm sure that we'll be able to convey the information, this is standard, this way so then the sector will be able to take advantage of it and implement it and be able to go through this journey. Thank you again. Thank you, Efraim. Congratulations. So we start this afternoon with more information that is very rich more knowledge exchange. That is the goal, the main goal of this symposium. I would like to remind you that as we had in the morning, you can send your questions to the speakers from the afternoon in our QR code we have here on the screen. And if through this QR code, you just have to point your cell phone, you will have the link, click on it, and you will have access to our WhatsApp, which is the communication number which is 1699629 now let's continue with with our sixth speech which is an international speaker i will call here Thierry. he's the director of the cnh and he will present the challenges of the mechanism of citrus for the ones who will need the headphones, so Portuguese is in channel one, Portuguese channel two, and the Spanish channel three. Thierry Lebriquet has, has a graduate and master's degree in engineering from the French Institute of Advanced Mechanics, has worked at Renault for seven years through different positions since 2006, he has worked at CNH Industrial with experience in the areas of product development, specialized in harvesting, agricultural equipment, product segment, and the agricultural product line. Chehi, thank you for being here, and the floor is yours. Bon dia, and that's it. It's my only word in Spanish, in Portuguese, sorry. I don't know, I can do it in French if you want, but I'm not sure if they will be able to translate, so I will do it in English. Um, my name is Thierry Le Bricaire, so I'm the global specialty harvester, so within CNH, so I'm in charge of the specialty fruits and the vegetables, so the mechanization worldwide and all the solutions for the growers, huh, for picking, of course, but also for maintaining the soil, maintaining the canopy and protecting the fruit. So the whole circle around the year, okay? I will try to keep you awake. I know it's a long day, it's uh, tough, a lot of information. Um, I have a presentation in five different sequence, okay? When we have been invited to present this, it has been a, an honor. We are really proud, but it's not also an easy exercise for us because 
First of all, we have a lot of projects, as you can imagine, but you have also some stuff that we cannot disclaim to all the people. So we have a lot of ongoing innovation stuff. But I need also to show you some interesting stuff that we did and that we are going to do. One thing that I also want to mention is that since the beginning of the day, um, we have not shared our presentation up front. But what I can notice is that we have a certain homogeneity across the different speakers. We are all more or less aligned. We maybe don't use the same words. We are coming from different countries, different experiences, but we are all aligned to commit and to say that we need to change something radically. And I'm hearing this everywhere in the world and in all the different fruits and vegetables. It's not only the orange business, it's everything and everywhere. We absolutely need to change the approach. We still don't know exactly what, how, but we know that we need to change something, okay? So I will try to go through this presentation. I will try to avoid to repeat what you already heard before. Huh? I will skip some of them, but don't hesitate that I'm here and available also to answer to a lot of your questions. So let's start quickly with a background, the introduction of CNHI, which is probably, you know, a combination of strong brands like Case IH, New Holland, also Case Construction Equipment, but also great technology like the acquisition of Raven that we did a couple of years. So it's a combination of old historical brands, 175 years for Case IH, for example, and also high technology. Few numbers. One company, 10 brands, 40,000 people around the world, 40 R&D centers, 43 plants, close to 23 billion revenue in 22. And our focus, main focus is agriculture, 76% exactly, but also construction equipment. And you also have in the, in the, in the corner here some financial services also to support our growers. The strategic and the priorities, priorities within our company are quite simple. We first want to serve all the growers from all the different businesses. So it could be dairy farm, could be cash crop, sugar cane here, uh, wheat, whatever, and also specialty fruits and vegetables. Thanks to a super strong dealer network, we have the biggest dealer network in the world, so we are very close to our growers. Also a lot of innovation project that is ongoing. And since a couple of years, also sustainability. Our company since 15 years is pushing strongly towards carbon reduction, reduction of the electricity consumption, all those stuff, and the safety of all our employees in our plants. Manufacturing facilities are around the world here. For example, in Latin America, we have five different plants, so very close to the final customers and growers. And you have one, one unique that we call Center of Excellence, COEX. COEX is the name of the small city that you see on the, on the top right corner, so it's the west part of France, close to the sea. And COEX is called it and the acronym, Center of Excellence, because you have in this plant around 450 people that are fully dedicated to specialty crop. So it represents only 1% of the total business of CNH, but you have this dedicated team that is working and focusing only on this, starting from innovation, engineering, you have also manufacturing, but also all the service support, like technical training, manual operator, spare parts, everything. Communication, commercial, everybody is there. Few numbers, just to highlight what we do. We process around 3,000 tons of steel per year, 10,000 drawing that we release per year, 
and we roughly produce 500 units. Two different businesses. The first one, historical, 50 years old of experience, of know-how, so on the left side, it's the grape. Grape business, premium, prestige, you pick half, you see our share, 50% of the machine in the world since 50 years are New Holland branded. Half of the wine that we consume in the world have been picked with our machine since 50 years. 20 years ago, and you see the numbers, huh? more or less 400 units per year, there's a split also across the different regions, so it's quite European business oriented, old traditional countries with vineyards as you know, France is probably the best wine in the world. I like to tease my colleagues, especially my Italian colleagues. And then 20 years ago, we have started a new product, a new machine, the olive harvester. So we started at the beginning, and you heard already some story with the grape harvester, with some adaptation, some kit. And in 2010, we've launched the first dedicated olive machine to the business super high density that I will explain you later. Nowadays we produce roughly 150 units and again here is quite European oriented but it's growing everywhere in the world. Now I'm starting to give you some numbers. This is a very important slide. We are not always using the same type of wording but I think we understand what is behind. Let's start with the, the table on the, on the bottom right with the three different categories. We call it category one, two, three. Super high density that you heard today, intensive, traditional, just based on the density, the row spacing and the distance between each trees. So at the end, it's uh, just number of trees per hectare. So category one, we started to put this above 1,000 trees per hectare up to 10,000. 10,000 is on the grape, champagne, one of the best wine. It's super high density. So we have this type of surfaces that represent 10 million hectares in the world. Super high density, category one. Behind this terminology for us, you have machines, you have product. You have picking head, picking machine, grape harvester, of course. You have straddle tractors also. You have also super narrow specialty tractor. And that's what we call this family of product for category one. Then you have the category two. 500, 600 trees per hectare, five to six meters between the rows. It's what we call the intensive model, it's a diameter of three meters, a single trees with a single trunk most of the time of one meter high. Then you have normal tractors and you don't have overall picking machines, okay? And then you have the traditional 10 by 10 meter, uh, old way of doing fruits with sometimes also low profile tractors. So you go under the branches to be close to the trunk. So you see also the surface, 10 million for category one. I cannot read it, 30 million on the category two and only 15 million on the category three, okay? Then you have on top the seven main crop in the world with their surface and the different colors to show their actual situation. And on the right hand side for each of them, you see the trend. Let's start first with the olive. As we, you heard already a lot this, this morning, olive, it's 50-50 between category three and category two. But since 20 years, you start to have the category one. So we are talking about 0 0.3, 0.4 million hectares per year, but it's growing. So the trend, it's trying to put more and more super high density plantation on olive, okay? 
It's also the same trend that you see on almonds, for example. Okay? When you look at grape, they are already super high density, all. So it's just stable. It doesn't change. We continue to improve because you have also climate change, but we don't change that much the density. Okay? Because what is going on? We know that, and that's the biggest, the balance, and that's the brainstorming that we have to do all together, is that in one side, to have more and more super high density allows you to reduce the picking cost or the willingness to the people to grab the fruits. You have mechanization around the year. You have also a better maturity, a better quality, because you control 100% of the total operation. But on the other side, we have also some agronomical challenges or constraints, typically water availability, the usage of pesticides, the demands from the growers, from the consumers, sorry, for organic food, because we are all uh, looking for our health. Also the temperature change that move progressively from the south to the north, so we need to adapt the plantation. Okay, so that's the balance. So that's what you are facing, we are facing as well, everywhere in the world for all those type of crops. Okay? I hope it's clear for you. Then, few numbers just to, that's for my boss, to compare the wheat surface versus the fruits. Indeed, wheat, if you look at their surface, it's 220 million hectares. So it's four times bigger than just the fruits. So the fruits, it's really peanuts. But when you look at the revenue, we generate twice more than the wheat in total. So we are close to 200 billion. And that's the revenue of the fruits out of the field. Uh, we are not talking about the added value when you transform the fruits to wine, for example. Huh? Just kilo per the cost per kilo out of the field. Okay? So at the end of the day, the specialty business has eight times more profitable surfaces versus the wheat in general and in the world, okay? That's just average big statistic, but just to let you know. So it's quite important to remind this also to, to my CEO. Up. Another important point is a classification that we do and we call this sometimes on the maturity of the business. Because you have the plantation, you have the machines, but you have also different stages for these first three examples, like olive, orange, and coffee. So far, you have some already mechanized solutions. They are not perfect, they are not super fast. Still a lot of hand picking, typically in orange also on coffee, and we know that in the near future, the business is ready to mechanize, to try to reduce the cost, because the commodity price doesn't change a lot, and we saw this this morning. And on the same time, we have the opportunity with mechanization to reduce the cost of picking, okay? The second one, Sorry. The second one is what we call prestige commodities. It's already mechanized, the wine, the almonds. But you have a new demand about greener production. So the consumer are looking toward sustain more sustainability, about healthy, organic food. So what we are looking for and investing is some new technology. This is a picture of a startup that we invested in a few, few months ago. It's actually more than one year. This is Stout Ag. So this is an AI machine that recognizes each individual lettuce and do a mechanical weeding so you avoid to use pesticide, for example. So that's typically the type of technology that those type of business are ready to digest. Okay? 
So it's the growers, but also our dealers and everything. And the last one is what we call the love commodities, typically the apple. I think we have seen already some pictures, some video on, on this type of orchard. Here, we are ready, and this is a picture from Advanced Farm that also we did an investment, a minority investment a few weeks ago. We have the capacity now to detect each individual apple and to grab them one by one. Okay? And that's typically the big added value that we can bring in the business. All right? I need to put some numbers. Giuliano asked me when I came a few months ago why, why none of the big ag companies never really invest in orange business or, let's say, in the fruits. It's just to, to show you a few numbers. Don't forget, specialty crop with CNH represent only 1%. One grape harvester, we produce 10 combines, we produce 100 tractors. So you see we are very, very small. And when you look at the top, this is the top six fruits in the world, you see that even within the fruits, where we are investing since 50 years, orange, it's not the number one, it's not the number three. Uh, you see, it's only, it represents only 2 billion. So we have also to put this in perspective for a big industrial company like us. Although we have a niche, a specific uh, plant in COEX dedicated to fruits, you see immediately here that we focus on the biggest opportunities, which was grape by far than olive. But what I wanted to tell you today, and the message that I want to bring you, is that we decided, finally, to invest massively, and let's say seriously, and constantly in this category two business. So we are going to, to invest on orange, on almonds, and also in apples, okay? But on top of the numbers, because numbers, it's good, but our company, as I present you at the beginning, is also looking for sustainable and sustainability. And of course, what's the best possible business on the fruits, on the, on the, the consumer? We have a big potential impact to try to do more with less, more yield, better quality, better traceability, try to avoid wasting. So that's typically what the company is willing to do and why the company is pushing a lot of investment to all those specialty crop. Let's now move to another sequence. Just to show you quickly, you have already seen a lot of video slides on the category one. So that's what we call the super high density. We started this journey 20 years ago, seriously, let's say, in 2010. The super high density, as you understood, allows you to reduce dramatically the usage of water, pesticide, and the efficiency of what you do. Picking at the right time, when you want, as fast as you want, almost. But at the end, you control 100% of the process. So you gain efficiency year over year, and that's very important. And I can tell you that the last 10 years in Spain and Portugal that are leading this process for olive, we almost double the yield in a couple of years, just because we understand, we learn super fast, we collect data, and we try to improve year over year, okay? So the target here is to continue to support the growth of those new plantations. So it's long, you have to replant. You know better than me that it costs a lot of money because you need also to put irrigation and so on. But our target here is to follow everywhere in the world because it's moving. Like in Argentina, we have more and more olive orchard in this way. Saudi Arabia, so you have more and more countries trying to produce their own olive oil 
And also in Brazil, I think it's the first time that we sold one unit for olive here in Brazil. We expect half a million hectare. I don't know if you remember, there are 10 million hectare of olives. So only half a million will be probably planted by 2030. But you also have other fruits. We started a launch last two years ago of the multi that you have seen, adapted also to, plant, to pick almonds. Almonds have a big challenges. They have a big challenges in California. The dust, the pesticide, it's mechanized, but it's not really sustainable. So the same discussion that we are having here, I have the same over there, okay? So we are also looking another model for almonds. You also have prunes, plums, I don't know the, the word, uh, exact word in English or in Portuguese. And of course, oranges that you have seen with IFAPA, okay? We started in 2010, we have a fleet, 800 machines around the world. The launch of this multi two years ago. Strategy here is quite clear. We will follow all this growth we will continue to produce or to adapt our machines. It's, it's always a game, or uh, I call this the chicken and the eggs. So we need, who do the first step? Is it the machine? And then you adapt the plantation to the shape of the machines? Or is it the opposite? So it's, uh, no, I have no answer. It's just that what I can tell you, is that it's just an ecosystem. So it's a brainstorming that we have started a long time ago on olive and then we continue on, on, on almonds. It's to understand the constraints of each of the people around the table, the growers, of course, but also the, org the, the genetic of the trees, the people that are also transforming the fruits and also ourselves because we have to produce machines. Technology is there. But everything, nothing, or, or everything is not possible. The machine has to be fast, has to be able to move from one field to another one, and overall has to be reliable, has to be profitable for all of us also, and we have to be clear. And that's why it's a long journey, and we would like to, to share this with you also on the oranges, okay? Another example here, but I was not aware, but IFAP already showed this before, so since three years, yes, we are testing. Picking this orange um, in Spain, orange field, I just highlight it here, the cost. Cost of picking per hectare, roughly 400 euro, okay? We can go fast. Don't forget the speed, which is key on vineyards, typically. We go fast, you have to pick five, six hectares before tomorrow because the weather is going to change, we can react. That's super important. Don't forget also the logistic. We bring massive amount of fruits quite fast if you extend the number of units, for example. And that's all the type of discussion that we are used to have with our growers. Okay? Just to finish on this category one, whatever crop we will have or trends in category one there will be, New Holland will be there. New Holland will commit to adapt, to adjust all our machines to this super high density. Okay? And here in the middle I've added also a picture about the blueberry. Similar different conditions, different businesses, but also there are difficulties to find people and so on, so as you are well aware. Okay? Let's move to what we call the category two. Category two, big surface. As I show you at the beginning, we also know that the shift from category two to category one will take a long time, and will maybe not possible huh? at the extreme of two, three thousand trees per hectare. 
So what I've, we have highlighted here on the top corner is the maturity or where we are. We are really at the beginning. Okay? I cannot show you everything, but consider that we are at the beginning. The 60% represent the know-how that we have. We know to pick. Huh? Picking means removing the fruits from the trees without damaging the branches, the leaves, removing the flowers on orange, the chumbinos, ah, my second Portuguese <laughs> word, and only picking the fruits, and if possible, only the ones that are mature. So we, we, know, we know how to do this. We are not experts picking oranges, because it, this has never been done before. Okay? But we think that we are able, if we put people, field test, experience, we think that we should be able to do it, okay? In a decent way. That's the challenge. And we know it's not that easy. Every single crop, and I would say, even in every different country is different. The variety on grape, you take Pinot Noir, you go in Bourgogne, you go in Oregon, they are completely different. But this we have experience. So that's why we put this 60%. We have know-how. We know to pick, we know to collect fruits, sealing, we know how to transport, we know how to clean, and we know how to do the logistic. Okay? So we don't have yet a complete machine or all together packed, so, but we have 60% of the know-how. That's the message that I wanted to, to give you. I think I will not go through the, the, the opportunities or the constraints because you know better than me. Huh? Today, you have difficulties just to find labor, people to pick, willingness to pick. And that's, as I said at the beginning, everywhere in the world. You go in California, it's the same. You go even sooner or later, in Asia Pacific, it's going to be the same problem. Okay? This type of machine, this type of solutions, and that's the last numbers that I have on the bottom, may reduce by 50% the cost of picking. Okay? And you see here a few numbers, one driver, one guy maybe with the tractor behind to, dr to drive the gondolas, but this is the numbers that we think we could achieve. Okay? I was lucky I did uh, this exercise and I show something from US uh, because this morning you, show, you saw something from, from Brazil. But the numbers in US are quite similar to everywhere. 41% of the picking of the total cost of production is just harvesting. So imagine if we can reduce this by two, the big disruptive solution and impact in the business. Okay? But Picking, at the end, is just one operation per year. And that's, I would say, not easy, but let's be humble. We will find a solution. But what is more important, it's all the other activities that also prepare a good picking. And you already have some discussion before, and here I mention the one that CNH can bring also alternative or solution and can support the business. Typically, weed control. To avoid to put glyphosate on the soil, and we have these constraints on vineyard, you saw that we invested in stout ag, mechanical weeding. So you detect the weed, you remove it. Or you do, if you have no choice, spot spraying with AI. So we have also this capacity and we are looking to find solutions to have a precise weed control. Another one is spraying. We have seen videos again and again. Spot spraying, automatic boom control. You do a map, row by row. You have a variable rate control. Whatever the speed of the tractor, you put the right quantity in front of each individual trees. 
even each individual fruit. Okay? So that type of technology, also with the acquisition of Raven, that we have the capacity to do. Okay? And on top of the top, you need, and it's in the middle, it's the cloud. The most important in this circle is to collect data. Whatever you do, we call see and act, you collect data. Even if you don't do a lot, at least you register what you have done, when you have done. And then you try to understand by putting them together, trying to understand and trying to advise for the next time, oh, let's try to combine and maybe I should do this type of operation tomorrow with this type of product because last year, three years, five years ago, I did it and it works well. So that's typically what we are launching. We call it my PLM Connect. So that's our customer interface to manage the fleet, to manage the operation, and to collect the data. And we are launching, and it's called VT, for Viticulture. We are launching in the CTV, so in one month. We will launch this specific app for the specialty growers. Okay? And with the intent to bring this also to the different crops, the different fruits, also vegetables, around the world. Okay, so that's something that is fully expert and dedicated for this type of crop. Okay, you're still there? Another point, very important, and I know you know, but it's better also to, to have one slide. It's not because we are going to make an ice, we are going to bring technologies that we, need, we don't need anyone, anymore the people. It's a big mistake. We will need the people. We will need uh, just the tractor drivers, people to drive the machine, to do the maintenance, to do the mechanics. We will need also someone to planning the different operation. And the more and more technology we are going to bring in the business, the more skilled people we will need. And we are used to this type of, of issues around the world. So that's why also we will take part of a training, a lot of training, technical training to support this growth. Otherwise, if you don't use properly the machines and the technology, you go nowhere, okay? And that's super important. And this is my, almost the last slide. It's about you, <laughs> you, the growers. We know, and, and sometimes I, I, I call this, it's not a category two that we are going to deploy. It's maybe a category 1.8. That means, for sure, we will need to adapt the plantation. That's mandatory. So I don't know who is going to do the first step. Huh? It's the chicken and the egg. We have ideas. We have a concept of the machines to pick those trees that you see here, but you see that already those trees have been slightly adapted. Huh? You have no low branches, just because you have a single trunk, you can have a good ceiling around the trunk to avoid ground losses, you see? So we have constraints that we will bring it to you. We will see together if it's acceptable yeah. Lateral branches, we know that we are facing damages because it's natural. It's not a 2D. Huh? Agromiora presented this 2D concept this morning. It's not a 2D, it's a 3D. So can we remove already some lateral branches? So we have already accumulated a couple of years of experience. Typically, you pick, you destroy the branch, and what the impact of the year after, or the second, or the third years, because how the tree recover these damages, okay? So that's all what we are proposing to you. It's to learn together, to try to move forward, and to see what's the best type of trees 
density, you saw that we have a category one available product. Huh? But those trees with some adaptation, are we really able to pick them and to harvest them? Okay? So, and that's my last one. That's what we are proposing you, is that I'm here today um, to allow us to grow together uh, and to be partners with all of you, I mean, key stakeholder of the Orange business, and trying to find a mechanization for picking first, but also all the different activities around the year to prepare the, the crop, to prepare the trees, and all the different operations. Okay? And then, obrigado, is going to be my third Portuguese word. <laughs> Muito obrigada, Thierry. Thank you, Thierry. Informações mais uma vez relevantes com uma abordagem que a gente uh, Important information again with an approach that we hadn't done in the issue of the concern with all the process, with all the people involved in the process. So a very important discussion, reminding that the questions, such as in the other times, can be sent through our WhatsApp, of the communication WhatsApp. We will put once again the QR code here on the screen for you to be able to access and send your questions for the round table moment, which will be closing this symposium. And now we are going to the sixth speech. And now it is going to be a little bit different. Now we're going to have the speech live through video. Our guest is Sergio Moreno, who is a representative of Technofruit in Spain. Sergio is going to be talking about assisted harvest in fruits with platforms for citriculture. And let's follow up the video that he recorded for us. For us. Hola, buenos días. Soy Sergio Moreno, encargado de investigación, diseño y desarrollo en la marca Tecnofruit, integrante de las empresas Moreno Intec y Darwin. Primero de todo, agradecer a Funde Citrus y a su director Julián Aires, así como a Millora, all, la posibilidad de poder asistir. I am Julian Aires and remotely I want to show you very briefly which is since many years of our project of the in the future with our experience in citriculture. Tecnofruit is a project that started more than 20 years ago. Tecnofruit is a project that started more than 20 years ago and it brought an experience in our sector working always with the citricultures and our densities and always seeking the best solutions for your problems. In order to develop in this project, in continuous development, it has been a priority offering a very well constructed product feasible for the necessities and bringing some necess uh, necessary developments. We want we were founded more than 35 years ago with m many experienced people in other uh, facilities that contemplate you know, technical um, offices, production line, and assembling. For us, as we, we were finalists, once we prioritize to our people to give this ampl amplified support, taking into account the different users. Everything I know that in many new markets that we could reach. ¿Qué significa que se ha creado en el campo? And what does it mean that was created on field? It means that we developed a lot to show the capabilities and new technologies. And besides that, which are the requirements for future seeking or technical solution? For this, the first ideas grow always, are born always on the field, where they allow us to seek the programmers. Nuestra meta conseguir a finalizar un proyecto es siempre con nuestros Our goal is being able to finalize a project. Every time there are a project respond to a uh, concept of flexibility and simplicity, we are aware for us to have a return in investments done by our clients to our harvesters, and they need to be used the whole year. This way we can 
we have a product in all the necessary operations in the plantings. Nuestra presencia de forma constante en países que van desde Canadá hasta Our Nueva Zelanda, constantly Chile, is from Canada, New Zealand, China, Argentina, and South Africa. And in Middle East and Europe brings a, a, a big, big variety of climates and ways of using. And as the clients are fun, fundamentals and give us this capability, we give gave them a blank page for them to write about their history. I take into account that I will answer your names because they are available to have this information. Gaskine, in Reino Unido. Es un reciente cliente Gaskine que ha decidido from the United Kingdom is a recent client who wanted to use our other harvesters using the techno fruit. Jerry, in los cinco años, ha introducido casi 100 cosechadores Jerry, techno fruit. Jerry, in the last five years, he used 100 harvester in Australia and New Zealand, countries where they always show how they invest your money. They have a very situation which is seen by the government, they, they use first quantity product, not being in the industry or opportunity of sales. That's the reason our harvester needs to, to, to attend all the, the requirements. Next slides will show what happens if we have a loss of, of quantity during the, the harvesting. Here the uh, Technofruit team always need to work. That's the reason why we collaborate with this way together with the manufacturers. This gives us a privileged view in a more automatized with other departments that we have here in the brand in this relation we have, it is allowed efficiently, continuously going forward in the, in the project. In the next slides, first to be able to understand what is the more adequate solution and why until now the clients who started with Technofruit did not change to other way of a harvester. Somehow, in a comic way, there are some concerns that a client might have. One of these points is the harvest, the moment where all the investment during the year need to be transformed into benefits. That's the reason we have techno fruit, for us not to have any problem during this process. This is a simple list summarizing the main benefits using a techno fruit harvester. It allows a high yield, getting to 350 kilos per hour in a very good quality plantation. We also use the good transportation with a better quality treating the fruit regarding to any other system. With an economy in the manpower and possibility of harvesting of all the trees and only once and the optimization of logistics since the launch to the harvesting and the management of containers we have. Because completely together this we have the system. Flexibility using the system d during the work and extremely facility of using that and high confidentiality and corporate usage. In this video, we have a Trabajo wide view of the productivity of our harvester, work team, teamwork, and everybody integrated in the machine. This reduces the time, efforts, for moments that are not necessary for the operators. This works in three levels. We can regulate the height and the size in which everyone each one has their work system. The fruits are put in boxes, which through a, a deliverer, electronically controlled, will collect and putting it inside there. The efforts are minimum regarding to the harvesting and, man, and manipulating the controllers, even the, whether full or empty. There's no contact with them. The machine starts getting established during the harvesting, being able to be adjusted, since every point will have in additional ways. 
We also have an automatic direction in all the axles and conduces and keeps the machines in the streets we have in the plantings. A small intervention, we see how all the set of transportation works. We have a higher space and movement for, in direction of the the operators for them to use it correctly and harvest correctly and using a platform to main, maintain the plants. Here we can see as the techno fruit trans harvesters transport the fruits during this harvesting process. The belts work among themselves and that's where the fruits are placed. To understand the importance of this process, we can check this table that we have here, and in the we have here the techno fruit process and the traditional ones. We have a production of 3,000 tons. There is a different area that we believe that is from it's up to 15 kilos. It's translated to reduce the costs of production. On the other hand, we have to value the data and we have to understand that those are kilos of fruits and that we invested in harvesting, transportation, and the preservation. We don't lose only the value of those kilos, but besides that, we have this first category production. And here we have a comparison to products from Germany. It was the, the first was a manual harvesting and the second one was mechanical. And we can see that was a reduction of manpower of 43%. Percent. We can, in a nutshell, if we do it manually, we can collect all the fruits in the ideal time window with a higher percentage and then we would reduce the benefits we are three kinds of harvesters covering all kinds of land and all kinds of crops but uh, the most important thing here is that the logistics of this running is the same all of them enable to have the same users using them. We can have the operators. There is no qualification for each model. We can see different accessories for the harvesters. All of them are thought to cover different operations through the year and enable the management. It can be automatic, it can be an additional control or a manual one. We see that our main sector since 2019 have been active in the citra culture. That's why we are here today. Lots of the concepts have been shown. We have this harvester, and we always use the same structure. We use the, the whole function. We put the accessories that are for this kind of crop. In this case, the harvester works picking the oranges, and we see the side belts. There is no change because this plantation comes from those trees, and uh, this way it pre it uh, it prevents the use of stairs. At the bottle, we, as you see here, we use those belts through this central belt. They put it here directly in those holes, 
and they do it individually. It enables uh, to, to place the fruits like this and they don't need they don't need to be so careful about those fruits as they should be with little fruits like small fruits such as strawberries. Now, and uh, going through the same uh, basic stru structure, which enables to have this size, which that goes from 40 to 60 diameter. We are harvesting oranges, and we can see that uh, we have this belt, which is equipped with another belt, one in the front one that goes up and the other four additional belts and uh, it is proper accord it is proper for the size of the plantation it you can you can use it tangerine oranges now we have the investigation and the development part where we are open to hear whatever is necessary for sustainability. We have a solid product and uh, we are very flexible. And here at this time, it wasn't possible to be with you, but uh, in January, I'll do my best to be with you on this field day to exchange ideas. If you need uh, any information, you have here my numbers, my email. Thank you for the attention and thank you for being here. Nós que agradecemos a gentileza do Sérgio Moreno de ter mandado esse vídeo para nós e vamos seguir aqui então. Thank you for the video and we will continue with our symposium. Our next speaker comes from Argentina. Let's receive here Estolfo from Citromax is an agronomist from Tucumán University in Argentina. He's been working on it for 25 years. He has developed positions as a coordinator, planner, and the manager of the fruit production and the processing in important business sectors. He will address the topic of uh, mechanized lemon harvesting in Argentina. Thank you for being here. Good afternoon, everyone. I will try to be very dynamic. I know that it's hard to be listening to others after lunch. Now let's start with this presentation, but being very dynamic, dealing with uh, this experience in the management of our mechanical harvesting in our company. And why? Why do I want to talk about it? Because everything that uh, you have seen so far are the results of the experience that was acquired by what we did in the field. If we are here, it's because we are in the production of this field and we've been developing this system in our company as a way to give sustainability to the activity. As it was said, Juliano and Dr. Monaco, the citrus activity in the world has been threatened economically in the production and even in a sanitary level. 
and the good sizes that there are opportunities where you have the ways to those opportunities that come and then this activity that we call citraculture, not only for the lemon or for the orange in Brazil or for the industry of the lemon in Tucumán, it's the activity as a general which has to have a sustainability that enables a production which will be with like with a better sustainability and uh, with less cost. Of course that we have uh, threats in the world. We have issues in this activity, but we also have uh, opportunities. And the main ones are the ones who have been developed by you. Opportunities, new ways to improve this activity. Now, being more specific than the presentation, as I was saying, the idea here is to convey our experience without making you use any system or favoring any kind of machine or like giving here a negative denotation. The idea here is to bring the results of our harvesting handling. So I want to make it clear because of course that we have lots of mistakes that we, that, uh, that uh, like mistakes in the tests, but it's important to have this conversation and start a process, a way to the mechanical harvesting Harvesting way. Of course, they are not immediate processes. They take a long, long time, but we need to do it. Of course, that someone will take away and maybe we'll have to change it this way because this is not the ideal way. And why? Why do I say that? Why do I highlight it? Because there isn't a key system. Just forget it. If someone comes and sells a machine to you and say, tell you that you will be able to harvest everything by the by half a price. No, it doesn't work like this. I believe that today we have opportunities, we have lots of work, we have several experiences toward this mechanical harvesting with all kinds of machine. However, there isn't any system in the world that has been installed I believe that I'm not wrong when by saying that. Going on here with my presentation, I will uh, show the experience that we've had by using this mechanization in the lemon harvesting. The first years that we started, we, in 2015, yes, I will tell a little bit about the sequence of our history or how we started. First, I will give you an overview so then you can have a context of, uh, our, of what our production is like, what we have in Tucumán, in Argentina. In 2022, we have this production data. Argentina had a production of 1,850,000 tons. And then approximately 74% of those fruits that were produced in Argentina and in Tucumán basically are directed to the industry. The other 26% up to 30% depending on the year. Is, uh, is for the export market. In the second place, we have Turkey, where the places are totally different. The percentage here is totally different. Then we have Spain, the United States, where the industrialization, all those countries are less than, are lower than what we have in, in Argentina, South Africa, 
in China. The distribution of lemon there, as we have already said, is 75% is in this process where you, you have the concentrated lemon juice and the, this, the dehydrated skin and the other 25% are fresh fruits and in this 25% we have a fresh fruit for exportation and other for the internal market in our country. Here we have, and I want to show you, and I'm going to mention a little bit of what I want to explain, this evolution of uh, surface planted with uh, lemon in Noa, which are Noa, our provinces in Argentina who produce lemon in the province of Tucumán, which produce more than 80% of total in the province of Salta and Cucuy. These are the three main provinces that are part of Noah. The evolution of the plant you have of lemon in the year of 2017 had a growth until the year of 2021. Very significant with the quantity of hectares. Why? Because in this time, there was an evolution of market in, in a high demand of the product the industrial products and we had good years of exportation of fresh fruits but what has happened in 2021 approximately or since 21 we have already had the consequence of this increase in the amount of hectares that are that produce lemon Obviously, we have a uh, limit of production and we had a good year for production of fruits and it was noted from the 19, 20, 21, 22. And this year we had a very important production. So this high production summed to the dynamism according to the Argentinian market, which it lost an important percentage of presence in the markets, such as fresh fruits. I mean, many of them that didn't, that weren't exported was directed for the industrial part. And during the last two years, industry of Tucumán did uh, record sales in production, with the consequence, obviously, that our uh, price formers in market. And we saw how the distribution of Toto Tucumán is, and is the distribution zone of fruits, lemon, and most and they are the most important in the world in volume and during many years as we had have had many fruits this is reflected in the prices of the products with the oils or juices or skins and they had a very big decrease in the values in the prices in the last two years the producer in fact had a very low return while the price of, uh, according to the price of the, the fruit. So during two or three years, we have a low return or negative in some cases. It is not incentivated, motivated, because they are increasing their super, super, uh, surface and eradicating the fruits. Why? Because this first evolution in growth of the surface happened taking out the years of sugarcane and going to lemon. Now, during the years, we have the, the inverse process. They are trying to eradicate that and go back to sugarcane. I believe that Tucumán will follow this dynamism until they find a balance in the market again. They produce 1,900,000 tons of lemon, and this is not feasible economically. This is a reality market. We get accommodated. The activity will get accommodated in the, sub in the superface that the market needs. Here is a sum, uh, summary of our company, Citromax, and it has more than 50 years of activity in Tucumán, always in the industrial area, and was born as an industry. They embedded the fresh fruits. We also have approximately eight, uh, 4,000 hectares uh, cultivated of lemon in, in the surfaces. Our bigger in the annual production are about 8 and 10% of total 
in the Tucumán province. Citromax is producing about 150, 180,000 tons during the last years. And here I am talking exclusively about lemon because I work with lemon. So as I said, 70% of the production is uh, goes in the industry and 30% we pack as fresh lemon. Our industry processes about 200 to 120,000 tons during the uh, during the year and during the packaging we have a uh, 20,000 20,000 pounds of lemon as a fresh fruit for exporting. This is a little bit of what I have been saying. The idea is not inducting the use of a system or not, using a machine or not, for you to take only as an experience, whether good or bad, but an experience that, thanks to the position they have, is uh, share it with you. Of everything we have said and the opportunity we have, these opportunities, one of these activities is reducing the cost of the crop. We saw in other presentations previously the weight of the cost, where there is a cost, a total cost of the production which is really high. So one of the main objectives of the mechanization is what we are seeking reducing costs with the crops. Or other of the big objectives we want now, or the main ones, is having this alternative front of what the availability of manpower we have. This is a theme that at the end we will treat again, because this is a very important theme according to when we say about the conclusion of treating all of this. Reducing cost of crops, as we said, and how it was shown in previous presentations, having a, a high participation in the total cost of production, increasing the, the crops, the cultivation. And here, there is a very important point. Starting the way, as I said, which is a way that is a journey that is not easy, it doesn't mean we will have the solution. The first thing we have to do is breaking the paradigms we have in the activities. What are them? The paradigms are all the thoughts and ideas that dominate on an activity. So, for example, first of all, if we as producers, we don't break some paradigms that we have according to production, it's going to be hard to start this journey to mechanization because we, here we're going to be talking about adaptation, plant with the pruning, planting uh, with high density as it was already mentioned, lots of things that will go favor or against this different way of to what one person is used in one production. So the main is breaking the paradigm, paradigms one person has. I need the change. So what do I need for this change? What are the systems of harv me mechanized harvesting that are available in market nowadays? I believe that we were already in exposition, and I am going to summarize that very quickly. And we have a facilitator system of harvesting, which we call platform which uh, is what they offered as our experience in 2015 here in one of these platforms very close to the ones that were demonstrated in one of, of the presentations and in fact we didn't have a yield of a, or an enhancement of the crops that justify the investment not because of the platform itself by the design or mechanical design the lemon production is different to the production of other fruits that we show here or that show the harvest. Lemon, if we share the, the plant in three thirds, 40% of or almost 50% of, of the plant 
is going to be in the lower third. Or if you have a four meters plant, let's say the 40, 50 percent of production is going to be in a high, not higher than 120, 150 centimeters. So using the platform, the advantage of it is that there is a uniform distribution because I can reach the medium and high part of the tree using less the tree and losing less time with the, with the harvester. There we have our differentiator of yield. In case of lemon, what we harvest more the, the lower part. So the person who goes higher in platform, proportionally they harvest less than people who are lower. That's the reason uh, when we are harvesting lemon, we don't we don't have a nice yield, but it's not a yield that we analyze after it, after three seasons in the operation, not bringing a significant increase of the yield that would justify the investment of them, just to nominate them. Besides these facilitators of harvesting, we have the system of me mechanicals uh, harvesting. We also have the canopy shakers, which one, the ones that will shake the canopies. And also we have the trunk shakers, the one that will shake the trunk of the tree. And this system of trunk shakers, we do not operate, we don't use in Tucumã. There, are, there is one or two companies that work with this kind of machine. For you to see, this is one kind of the trunk shaker, which does the service of harvesting in Tucumã. I will just show you very quickly. I'm going to be here too long. I'm going to explain you about that because we don't manage it. This is the machine that goes under the tree. Here you can see this tree, the pruning necessarily, if necessarily, if the tree is too old for you to introduce this machine. And the trunk needs to be minimally uh, a size of 30 centimeters since the size of the, the graft for the belt that will shake to do, to have this contact and not harm the trunk. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the system that we use, and I can detail a little bit more, which are the canopy shakers. The system that will shake the canopies. What are the, the what is the the important there with the quantity of fruits that release in the system is because of the movement and vibration that are done close to where this fruit is. They are done through the leaves or through the same fruit that touches these branches that gets inside the canopy horizontally we have as there is a small vibration a movement that vibrates the tree this is the foundation the basic foundation the, the fruit having a direct contact or in contact with the branch higher percentage of the fruits for example drops because of the movement of vibration of the leaves and not because of the branches it works with these objects and the system that we use at Citromax are two different systems but both of them are shakers of canopy we have one lateral system and one system that which is jumping and the other system are horizontal branches in the radial sense this branch is that goes in partially in the crown in the canopy will oxidate the leaves and it will make this fruit to drop this make it to have a continuous drop fall of this and they will have this harvesting system which is inside the machine as i was telling you we work with two different systems we talked about the 
jumping system, which is auto proposing, which goes through the uh, attack both sides simultaneously. And the system here is complemented with tractors and with a, a container. And we have a lateral system which goes in both sides of the row. There are two independent machines, but they go in the same high and the same speed of work. Each machine also has a container with the tractor. The basic considerations of operation in this system, we have been working with it with a horseback system in sectors where we have this combination which are being lies. In this, this sense, we, wor we work with the ply fried dragon and we have 550 plants per hectare. They are planted six per three, six distance between the rows and three between the plants. We have 150 plants per hectare and the pl yeah, we, they were planted between 99 and 2000. And the lateral system, we work with, with a, a conventional milestone on plants plants which are also older and in, they have 27, 28 years and they use this uh, plantation of 8 per 5 and the year of plantation 1996 and I will show you the choices of lots we had at this moment. Here we can see this system, which is the lateral system. There are two machines that attack both sides of the plant. We have here the sticks that generate this movement in the canopy. Here the same thing. We have here the barrel, and then we have this harvesting system, and they work simultaneously, and they get together to prevent that the fruit that goes in the middle of the plant will not be picked it up by one of those platforms. Here there is another picture of the system, the machine. It will attack the tree. We have here another barrel that circulates. This is the horseback system that uh, is the machine that has both the sides, goes on the top of the plantation. There is a container that goes on the other side, harvesting the fruits in the same machine. Here the difference that it has three heads that act independent, independently and it has a sequence of movement here the same machine. And here there is a short video of the machines running. I will have some takeaways here. We have here the side system. Each one goes to one side. It is dragged by a tractor. We have the unload system, a tractor with a container doing the harvesting process of the fruit. This is the horseback system. It goes on the row harvesting and then in the, in the other in the other row there is the tractor doing the harvesting process. This is the same machine going to a row of harvesting. I would like you to take a look here as you see the movement of the vibration and how they harvest the fruits. I will have some takeaways here. 
Here we have the sticks, and as they are smaller plants, we have smaller sticks. We have this system. The machine has this harv harvesting, cleaning, and the transportation system. Here you see a row that I wa that already had the harvesting, and, they are, and then we have another one that hasn't had the har harvesting process yet. This one had the harvesting, but here is one of the inconvenient things where we don't have the efficiency that we are looking for. When the plants touch one another, it's hard for the stick to penetrate in it and do the movement to make the fruit fall. And when, we, when they touch one another, there is a blind point here where they can't move you with the sticks at the same time and then the fruits don't fall. Some takeaways here of the operation. Those are some average numbers here. It can be from 0 0.5 to 1 kilometer per hour. It will depend on the size of the batch, the work capacity between from 0 0.3 to 0 0.5 per hour. Because it's from 8 to 10, we can have another shift and we can have a, 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 a waste of the time because sometimes the machine stops for some adjustments. Our shift is eight hours and the average of production is from four to six tons collected per hour. And I will highlight some things here. And in the system, between 40 to 60 tons a day for eight hours. This is a very fast system here. When we speak of boxes, we have a different measure. We have a box of 20 kilos for the production of a tree. So the total of box of 20 kilos, the machine, the harvester has collected 55%, and then we had on the on the floor 15 percent so the dropping is 15 percent percent and then we would have 30 percent for the manual harvesting our efficiency is 70 percent and then i need to have those when i see this efficiency of the machine i see the fu function of what I have to do again in the container. If the plant had 20 boxes and I collect only six, this is the yield that I have inside the container. Not everything that we had on the soil. It's I don't consider this dropping as an efficiency, inefficiency. So a fast and analysis here, I have the cost versus the direct uh, maintenance. We have the side the system according to the yield. You know, we have a cost of $31 collecting 22 tons because that's what we, that's our the harvesting. We have the cost of $31. If I put $14 of waste, I will explain why. Then I consider 10% that I need to replace it because I pruned the plants for this system, and I will explain why. And then I will have you to analyze the cost according to each campaign, and then I would have a reimbursement that I, I've done in the system. Today, with 55%, I, have a, I don't have a feasible situation. I need to improve my efficiency up to 75% as a minimum to get this efficiency. But it's very hard, and I will, I will explain why. 
in this horseback system. The analysis. So that's another, we have another analysis to improve our efficiency that I need. I needed to improve something that is around 30% and the kind of plant where we work with, with this horseback system is possible to have this improvement. In the other one is a little bit harder and they will explain why. To explain part of what we've been doing, this is a comparison of production between a batch that we had versus a batch that uh, had that that it was the same combination, had the same space in the in the in the rows with the same like the traditional pruning. It is if you look at 2017, that's when we acquired the machine. So for this campaign of 2017, we had this necessary pruning, which was very severe. And uh, look at the difference here. The greener line here, that's where we worked with the mechanical system. And the other was the manual, the, the, the simple harvesting. And the traditional harvesting here was the double compared to the other. The fall was very significant. And for the next years, we had this average of 20% 20, 20 of yield. And where, where do I want to get with the information? We have mechanical systems in very big plants, which are not not feasible. Why? Because to get this efficiency or to increase the tons of harvesting, I need I need to have a very severe pruning through time. It shows that there is a reduction of the production. So that's what the mechanical system has. We need to search for this relation, plant and the machine, which is sustainable. I don't need to reduce the cost of my harvester. I just need, I need to, in, I actually, we need to have a balance here. And this, in this case here, we were not able to do it. And uh, what, where it took us? Where did it take us after this management? And here we have to think as experience that I had and I don't want to buy a machine I mean, use the I didn't have an idea where to go. Just use, I just used the machine the way I wanted, but then later on we were able to do many more things, to take better decisions in the field and within those considerations. We saw, we could understand what we were able to harvest and then we had these proper batches for the transportation. We had the right destiny. Actually, we we need to think of all those things before deciding about the implementation of the system. We have to take into account all those things according to my experience or everything that we had. As what? Actually, we have to think of uh, of the best machine that is proper for this kind of work. So why? Why do I need this machine? We have to think of the logistics, the, the human resources, the groups of work. If we don't think of it, it's not possible to do it. And because it's hard to have people, it's hard to have a machine where people have to take the, decision, the decisions on it. It's not easy. It's not easy to have a mechanic that will be specialized in this machine because those are new things for them. Maybe a person will not actually it's an, uh, it's an employee that has been very important to the field but he doesn't know how to tackle this machine and we needed to have the measures, the analysis 
and uh, the employee needs to be right about his decisions. He can't make mistakes, especially related to the um, to the batches. And uh, this way, he, he, if he does everything right, he will best the, he will have the best way. And as I'm saying, we have to choose the system, a structure that uh, we haven't taken into consideration. We have the other windows for the usage. What are the possibilities that we have? When when can we use this machine? And I will explain why. Uh -huh. So all the conditions that we have mentioned here. And what are the limitations that uh, we have found in the system? We have the low transmission of the vibration where the stick touches. However, the vibration gets lower and lower. And this transmission through the leaf is, is very low. And this, this low transmission takes to a low reduction from the outside to the inside of the plant. There is a limitation of the stick penetration because of the plant structure. I would need more time to explain that. But I would like to see why we can't do that for the stick to penetrate better because lemon has the habit of production which is very distinct. If you product, m produce more than that, and I reduce the, the depth of the, the, um, the size of the plant, then we return to the theme of convening mechanically to improve the efficiency, but will improve the, the production. Then we have that uh, in decrease of that according to the machine, the window of the harvest counting the period of days different from the oranges or others we have this the lemon is reflowering so I can I can have three or four layers of fruit so I can return with a uniformization theme of these layers if not it would be harvesting and making up all the rest that is not enough mature with the size needed size, size to be harvested so what do we do in this time of production we wait it is in the march month to september so probably at the end so we can get to the to the machines and the distinct uh, layers we have to to have the harvest why do we do that this decrease the the capability of days of work the low efficiency regarding to big planting that's what we were mentioning and a high percentage of residues uh, they are not dirty anymore because they have a cleaning system Independent of the position, the higher product we have is the oil. We are not uh, allowing any other kind of product. What are the solutions? Modification, the way of that, that lowering, uh, lower, uh, putting higher the lower part, modernizing the advancements, and here are some damages, structural damages we can have when they don't prune it correctly. The machine makes the effort and breaks some, some of the branches. These are the extreme cases. This is not normal to happen. And what are the opportunities of, in, of improvement? Learning with the mistakes being using the expertise with everything we know all the knowledge we have for us it's very important to have this expertise during the years 
maybe we don't have a so positive result, but we have learned a lot of things. Now we can say that we can prepare the size, the sizes for the harvest. Talking about nursery, the parts that are higher, if we can remove the the canopy for it to grow higher, for it for us not to need to prune the lower part, but for the plants to grow higher. Choosing the lots of which have the most adequate lots, better trees. Using this experience, we didn't have implemented lots adequate to do that. Nowadays, after six years, we had lots where from next year on we will start changing the way of work. And we are improving the, the way of recollection and decreasing the damages working with the lots for us to have a better way of work, decreasing the death way of operation. And which are the main conclusions? And I said well, a part of them. And I have this, this harvest that we said. There is a, a way, a, big, a nice possibility in all the systems of the experimental rehearsal, trials, let me say. These are the tests. We have the systems of key on hand. If, if somebody says that you will make money with this harvest, that's not how it's going to work. There's not success. This is a summarize that I brought for you. Then we have we have to seek an harmony in the production and the harvest that will take us to be competitive. And we can think about unique solutions. And we have to, as I said, we have to break the paradigms of activity that will take us to innovation and to reinvent our business. Thank you so much, and I hope I have been useful. Thank you so much. Now we will have for a juice break for us to stretch a little bit, and we have three more speeches to finalize our symposium after this break. See you. Vamos então agora retomar Let's get started o again our symposium the new citriculture production systems and automation of citrus. This is the last part of the second panel. This important moment of discussion of learning and exchange we are having today in the International Center of Convention of Araraquara. I kindly ask you please to get back to your seats and this way we can keep going with our work. And for this presentation now, I will call to the stage the representative of the Israel, Israeli company Claudio Nasser for the lecture robotiz robotization and the use of drones for harvesting of fruits. Claudio is a chemical engineer, graduated from Foundation Armando Alvarez Penteado with specialization in finance and economics from FGV. She has accumulated several years of experience working at renowned financial institutions in Brazil and the USA, including JP Morgan, Citibank, and Merrill Lynch in 2019. Recognizing the significant technological revolution in the field of artificial intelligence and a learning machine Claudia founded Innovatec Brazil with the goal of introducing technologies which are innovative in Brazil, focusing in agribusiness. Claudia, thank you so much for your presence. Please feel free. Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank the invitation of Fungi Citrus of giving us this opportunity for showing the technology of Tevel. Tevel is a technology company, technology 4.0. It deals with the machine learning, inter, uh, artificial intelligence, 
computational vision to solve the problem of manpower in harvesting. It's a solution that uses drones, and I will show you what they have done in terms of harvesting other fruits. Why? Because up to now, there wasn't a will, a real will of developing technology for oranges. But this technology can be developed very quickly from three to six months in only one crop. Why? Because they use the machine learning to develop the algorithm and the businesses. So they have these robots harvesting according to the caliber and according to the color or the maturity of these fruits. So you also have how to you can use this technology and you have the selectivity of the harvest. I will show you uh, Apple harvesting the robotic solution. In fact, a solution to face the scarce of manpower. I don't know if you know in the whole world the middle age of the harvester of fruits is 63 years old. And Brazil is 55, 57 years old. It's a very tiring work. So I think technology will help a lot in this uh, aspect, especially because, in fact, we're not going to be we're not gonna not gonna be using the harvester the pickers of fruits because we will help them only help them with technology for them to have a better productivity with less work especially in the part of the ladders the stairs and the work we have done with the drones we can uh, eliminate the use of stairs and starting at the top of the trees. Now I will show you the global trends. You have the lands which will have been planted with fruits and they are growing and you have a better availability of manpower. The producers who are nowadays harvesting uh, oranges with the pickers they see that in, in long and mid-term this is going to be difficult because the young population do not want to keep as, a, as pickers of fruits. This is a graph on the number of people who are employed in the agriculture from 24 to 2019 in Brazil. As you see, there's a big reduction of population who are working on agriculture now. This globally is the quantity in this graph. You can see that it says the quant what is the quantity of land being used in order to use to plant fruits. And you see that in some there is a moment of 53 million hectares to almost 67,000 hectares. The participation, as I've already seen the, in the manpower, it is decreasing. And this graph shows Brazil with an even bigger problem because it is reducing even more every year in Brazil, much more than in US and Europe. And I'm going to show you a little bit about the advantage of the autonomous flying robots of Tevel. They can be used in different uh, groves, different sizes. They can be used with different fruits. It is already available for apples, pears, nectarines, for many fruits that had already an algorithm developed. It also does many other uh, works such as spraying and pruning. It depends a lot on what the client wants to do with the drones. And you can also adapt the platform to any kind of design and harvest. So you can have big platforms with eight robots, you can have plat smaller platforms with four robots. 
and it depends a lot on the distance between the trees, the plants, but everything is uh, customized. It works as a robotic arm, which is intelligent. The TVL has 11 patents in the whole world, and it is extremely resistant. Uh, the person who is thinking about that robot who falls down, breaks, no, it's extremely resistant. It can pick up a fruit up to three kilos very easily. So, as I was saying, today it has an algorithm developed and the capability of learning with apple, uh, pears, and many other fruits, almonds, plums. So, for me, for this is to show that it can be adapted to different kinds of groves. So you can see that there are the plant farms and robots, and they can be also uh, be driven by our autonomous um, vehicles. If you, if you don't want to use a tractor, for example, the platform can be developed locally. The only thing which is important are the electronics related to robots. Okay, I got it. So as I was saying, the distance between rows can be customized independent on the distance between the rows, between the trees, and also the height of the trees. They, they are, they doesn't matter as well. They don't matter as well. They can have many heights and the platform is designed according to, to this uh, several heights. Other interesting things is that the robots can harvest, for example, the left side and not the right side. Everything is customized. For example, if you have a row where the sun, the sunlight were appeared more, and you want to to harvest only that row, you can program it to harvest only that row. Let's say that half of the fruits are in the point of maturity and in the correct gauge, the robot will recognize that through co computing, vision, uh, computational vision, and they will harvest only that fruits that are according to what was designed by the company, according to gauge and ma maturity in color. Okay, it skipped. Can I? I can't go back? Well, it skipped one slide. In this classification. Oh, is it the one? In this classification, you also have total tracking of the fruits. The tracking of the fruits, how do they work? Each fruit that is collected, we know where, which tree it was harvested from, in which row. So you have total tr uh, tracking of all the fruits that were collected by geolocalization, even the counting diameter, if there is a any problem in the fruit, if the fruit has any disease, and you can take corrective actions according to what was harvested. Because all this algorithm, all this information is transferred to the cloud, and the person can be there in the office remotely, and they know exactly where the fruit which was harvested with that problem or disease was harvested. Well, as I said, it detects and classifies the diseases and any problems pretty much uh, instantaneously. And if the person adopts this kind of this technology, they have a big advantage because the robots are not so expensive, such as the other technologies that are available. Tevel's technology is the most developed which is available commercially nowadays.
it skipped again. There I'm showing the detection of the diseases here. We are showing some apples. We show apples that during the time the machine learning and identifies which kind of problem the fruit has. If it's a burn from the sun, if it was because of an insect, or if it's rotten somehow, which is affecting the fruit. So we can see through this technology, we can select the fruits when harvested. Farming has always been a challenging industry that comes with plenty of risk and uncertainty. If you ask a farmer what is your biggest concern, he will tell you labor. There is a shortage in fruit picking labor around the world that's leading to fruit being wasted and left to rot on the trees. And so the question is, how do you make harvesting more efficient, more reliable, while also helping farmers become more profitable? And this is exactly where Tavel comes in with our flying autonomous robots. Driven by artificial intelligence and cutting edge algorithms. Our robots are small, agile, and cost effective. They pick the, the fruit very gently without bruising it to protect the quality of the fruit. Farmers can guarantee that we pick the best quality of fruits on time. Our flying autonomous robots can already harvest apples, peaches, nectarines, apricots, plums, and pears. They can pick in narrow orchard, wide orchard, thin trees, thick trees, different heights of trees. They can also pick at night to really maximize the amount of time available for harvesting. And it's not just the harvesting services we're providing, we also have very advanced software that shows growers real-time data on every single piece of fruit picked, including the weight and size of each fruit, the ripeness level, color grading, geolocation, diameter, and much more. With our software, farmers know the exact content and characteristics of their bin in real time during harvest. We partnered with different uh, machinery manufacturers to deploy our robots in different geographies. So far, we worked in Washington, California, Italy, and Israel, pick different kinds of fruit with many customers. We're already performing commercial harvesting, and our clients continue to transform their operations with our robots. We're creating by far the best fruit pickers in the world. Join us. Tem um outro filmezinho, né? Que vai entrar. Essa já é um. There is another video here, and this machine is already harvesting the apples. That's an operational one. Coisa que eu esqueci de falar para vocês. Something é que that I forgot to mention is that the robots work day and night, and they work better, like they they work more precisely at night because of the light, which is better, and uh, makes the harvesting more directed. Another thing that I would like to mention here is that the set of four robots has the capacity of harvesting from 7 to 10 tons of fruits a day.
Here you can see that they're harvesting with light, uh, night light. And the, all the information is available on the cell phone. This video is to show that as time goes by, the robots pick it up the apples, the fruits faster because the algorithm learns from the from the machine and they identify the fruits better. Algumas dessas plataformas elas estão também Some of those platforms have independent vehicles which is an option for the for the customer Here you have the same process. a harvesting that has been carried out in Chile and it's already operational. As you can see, those fruits are fruits for the table. The time that it takes up for the machine to pick it up is longer than the for the pick it's big it's longer than the picking for the orange because all the fruits that have been developed are fruits that can't have any kind of damage because they will be sold for table fruits that's why the, it takes uh, longer for the robot to pick it up for the orange it would, it would be faster because it's not a table fruit Além do que, o robô hoje, that, ele the robot puts everything in the box, separate boxes with quality, and it takes a while.
Yes, that's it. So here is the team that we have. They have got several hours because of this development. I really hope that you have enjoyed this technology. If you have questions, I'm here available for you, okay? Thank you. Thank you, Claudia. Bom, Cláudia, pela quantidade de celulares levantados para According to the amount of cell phones that were up here, were up here, I believe that it was not only me who was amazed by this technology. You can also send questions to Cláudia, who will be in our round table through the WhatsApp. The number is 1699624. Seven one. So please, sixteen nine nine six two nine two four seven one, and you can ask questions, and it can be directed to the speaker. Now I'd like to call here to continue with our presentation. The representative of this company, Ronaldo, he is the supervisor of a company, Jacto. Uh, this is a digital agriculture and services division of Jacto uh, and uh, the agriculture, agriculture machinery. He is a mechanical production engineer from the University of Marília and a graduate in technology and precision agriculture mechanization from the Faculty of Technology of Pompeii. Currently, he's a master's student in the postgraduate program in agriculture systems engineering at Zalk USP. And his topic is about autonomous sprayers, a reality for citric culture. So thank you. Feel free. Good afternoon. I would like to thank you for being here and speak a little bit about autonomous spraying. But beforehand, I think Claudia has mentioned this agriculture point 4.0. And to speak of it, I think it's important to take a look at the past, to understand how the evolution of agriculture was and it should be where we are nowadays. In the 90s, what was the milestone? It was a system of production that was very dependent on the man, and it had a low productivity efficiency because it depended on the man. And that time, we had the agriculture of 1.0, the beginning of mechanization, and uh, the tractors were introduced at this time, and we have this name of agriculture 1.0, and the gain here was the efficiency. So the field machines were more efficient in the operations. And then in 1950, we had another milestone, and you have already heard, you probably, you probably have heard about the Green Revolution, that period that we lived at that time that were because of the wars and then needed to use some products that were being developed and then there was a potential to have this insertion in the agriculture. It was a very outstanding period because of the fertilizers and also because of the agricultural defenses and we could increase the productivity. And then at, in the 90s up to 2000, it was a time where we call 3.0 that was very present with this precision agriculture. What is the milestone at this time? Probably we haven't noticed what uh, we had three times. Today we use Waze, Google Maps, but in the agriculture it wasn't different. So what we saw here was the insertion of some technology from 1990 to 2000. And then in 2000, the GPS, which is a satellite from the American Army, 
they removed the noise that uh, was there on purpose and with that it was able to use the GPS and inside agriculture it became very popular but when we speak of this agriculture 4.0 that's the time we've been living and it started in 2010 but there is no end we don't know when this agriculture 4.0 will have the end we know the beginning but we don't know when it will end and what is when is the milestone the first thing is the quality internet has changed everything in the field by using the internet enables us to do things that weren't possible before we have lots of information data and through that we can handle differently things and we see that this new era in the field will be very present. So when we speak of agriculture 5.0, we have no idea when it will start. But what will the big difference be from 4.0 to 5.0? That's what we've been mentioned here. We need to minimize the impact of manpower by using artificial intelligence, algorithms, doing deep learning and using models that will be better than the human being. So why did I show that to you? So now we will go into the topic, which is the autonomous spraying. Jaco, when we speak of spraying, when did it start? In 2010, it had the first appearance in the market with this vehicle that we call the JAV-1, so at AgriShow, which is a fair, very famous fair in Brazil. We took this to our stand, and then we wanted to feel how market would see this. That machine didn't spray at that time, but we kind of tried to understand what it would do to our market. Then we had our second version in 2013. And then this machine is for the citrus market. And we have taken this to the field. We have sprayed many fields with it. And then in 2020, in the pandemic, we launched our machine that we call our bus 4000 JAV. I will show a short video here so then you can understand what this machine is like.
essa foi a máquina que a gente That's lançou em 2020. That we launched in 2020. Nowadays we have eight machines in the field. The next year we will have a bigger batch. Before speaking of level of autonomy, a differential of this machine, we don't sell it with the product. We outsource the product. So we understand that this disruptive technology needs to have a better follow-up of a specialist in the field. So this business model, and uh, when we presented, we said, we mentioned Jaco which is a service provision of our company and at this time we are not selling this as a product we are serving this as a provider when we speak of level of autonomy there is uh, there is this control that it goes from zero to one, for example, and when we speak of level one in the machine, is the one that has this human intervention, which is very strong. So the operator has to run the machine during the whole operation, and it demands a very slow activity demanding a person who will be 100% dedicated to those operations. And when we go to level two of autonomy, we see, we call them limited autonomy, but the net level two of autonomy means that the system has some conditions. What is that? For example, the machine cutting something, identifying, and say, informing that it has already been there. So this is a level of autonomy. But when we look at level three, when we speak of the automatic pilot, the operator can activate or inactivate this function. So it is in charge of the operator. We always have this this picture of the man which is necessary inside the machine but in this level level three which is the highest level of autonomy the operator can activate it or not this function when we speak of this we are here in level four there is no operator in the machine the machine is just supervising remotely the machine it still needs to be there to check the spray but this is level four that's where our machine is at this at this moment but we are going to level five where we we see that it will be not necessary a man taking care of it we will have only algorithms taking care of it, the whole operation and then to be in this level we have to go further this next step, we will need to do that together with all of you. So just highlighting here, we are, we are here on level 4, and our target is going to level 5 of autonomy. What does this machine have of different? What does it do different compared to a conventional sprayer? explaining a little bit about the plan, the operation plan. How does it work for me to spray with this vehicle, which is not um, maneuverable? We do that in two ways. We can do an aerial mapping or a land mapping. We determine, we do the line project, where this machine needs to go to. Of, of course, when we do it, the aerial is much more efficient, but much faster. And second step, we need to go to set the the data. They need to know which volume of application they will do, the speed of the the RPM of our fans that we will come, uh, we will set. And we do we need to do that before starting operation. What is the next step we need? We need to determine if the operation will be individual or a mission with more than one machine. And we need to distribute this mission among this group of machines so it is possible to work with more than one machine on field having that done we have to put it on field it can be there in the in in the office in or in anywhere in not in the field 
on the field. And this function is called follow the leader, and the other function is called comboio. And the, the machine will follow everything we determined previously. Obviously, during the operation, we had to do the refueling, and this machine will go to the fueling point to refuel and keep the, its mission. What else is a big difference? When you talk about systems which are more seen on field, which is the level 3, we see the GPS system, the browsing system. The great differentiator here, you can see that we have a camera and a laser. The camera is for training our artificial intelligence. It needs to know that you saw on the video what is an obstacle when they need to stop the machine. Or, for example, say, oh, this is a log, so there's no problem, keep going. This artificial intelligence is trained every day that is operating. And the laser, we scan the area 3D. What else, which is a big difference in the previous um, speeches talked about volume of canopy, I don't know if they talked about cut, but with our laser we could have give a step which citric culture does not have, which is doing variable range of the application. What is it? We understand that the wheel in the citrus area is doing a volume of application for a volume of canopy, so this laser determined the volume of the canopy Given this determined which volume do we have, we, we will tune the doses and apply that according to the volume of the canopy. We have we need to identify if there is a failure on on the crown of the tree, if it was pruned or a smaller tree. We need to determine the section. We need to can cut up to eight sessions. When I was talking about functionality, follow the leader, that's what we use when we need to put it on field. You see that in front we have a car, we have like a QR code. So the machine reads and says, okay, I understood. This is my leader, I need to follow. So, if, um, so they understand who's the leader and they just follow the leader. If I had more than one machine, this machine is uh, range one, second range two, and go on. And all the machines we take to, to the field. Another thing we understood this idea is to work for 24 hours per day. And we have this camera system, and no way using this camera to do beyond the, the spraying. We are working here to detect fruits, and with fruits det detection to deliver uh, forecast of productivity, and more than that, be able to classify the fruits according to the level of maturity. What can we do that in the future? Uh, identific identifying past weed using our AI which we have developed during the time. Here's a work we have done and we compared the Javi versus Airbus 4000 Valencia and what we saw here. You see that Javi worked there in Valencia with the same application volume, both of them with 405,000 uh, liters per hectare and we the speed was a little different 3.5 and 2.2 of the valleys and what we saw here we had a work sharing three heights in two positions so we placed there the sensible part in the lower part and we measured in two ways following the trunk or among the trees you see that the orange is the Jav, the percentage of coverage and the gray one is valence and this is non significant we understood that with Jav we could be faster it, it sprays both sides so we have a bilateral against a unilateral and going faster and covering the percentage that didn't have a significant difference. So in practice, it means going faster, spraying double of the efficiency and getting the same percentage of coverage. That's what our technology showed. And here, heading to the end, I think that maybe this is what all managers CEO when they say, oh, but there's something missing here. 
why will I put autonomous inside my property? When we show that, it looks like that right away he says, that's what I need. And I, if you think it's not very well distributed, the part of machines, we can discuss that. But this came through research that we see that normally it is dimensioned on field, which is today a conventional operation of citrus for 500 hectares. That's a configuration we see. You, ha you need three tractors, three sprayers, and sometimes one truck that fuel, that fuel tank you won't have, but you see this configuration. They need to have this operation to work with 500 hectares. So you have four people, four, three sprayers, three tractors, and one truck. When you go to the operation which has no people, you look that for 500 hectares, you need two javs, two employees, and one truck. That's what you see. So this is the reduction that we see. If you double operation, this is not 500 hectares. These are 1,000 hectares. That's double everything there. Machines and people. So we will need eight employees, six sprayers, six tractors, and two trucks. And for Operation Vijav, we will need the same two employees for Airbus Jav and one truck. This is the impact we, sh we show. This is what everybody looks at and say, I need this operation in my farm. In the previous speeches, they said a lot about even more needing to apply more. And in this model, we are talking about one shift. But what we see on field, it's not one, one shift on this operation. This is working three shifts. That's the impact we see on field with an operation of 1,000 hectares. And how many in one side you need to have 24 employees, six spares, two, six tractors and two trucks with this operation with a uh, non-driving um, tractor, you need only six, the same six employees for Airbus and one truck. That's what I had to say. Thank you so much. And I'm here in case you need. Thank you, Ronaldo. Please. Thank you so much for all the information you brought us. And just reminding once again that he is going to be available to answer your questions. Just send through the WhatsApp. Let's put here again our QR code. If you eventually are not familiar yet with, with it, just point your camera, the camera of your phone, and click on the link for you to send the questions. And now we are going to the last speech of this symposium, this meeting of today. And after this, we will have the round table to discuss what was brought of information here until now. And I will call to the stage now to talk to us the representative of Solintec, Bruno Pavão. Bruno is an agronomist from UNESP Budukatu has 10 years of experience in agricultural production in the area of production management, mechanization, and agricultural technology. For five years, he managed the agricultural mechanization and innovation department of Mitsu in Brazil. Currently, he is director of Solinftex Robotics Department for production of autonomous robots that perform localized applications. Data collection using artificial intelligence technology developed by the brand itself. Bruno, please. The theme of Bruno's speech, speech is use of sensors and digital tools in citriculture. You, you are welcome, Bruno. Good afternoon. First of all, I'd like to thank this invitation uh, on behalf of Solinftec uh, to be here. I think my way of con driving this is going to be a little bit different. For more than 10 years, I'm, I'm working with farm and managing, management, preparing the harvest. I appreciate citriculture. That's where I had my first professional experience as an intern in the Mojiguasu area. Since then, I have seeked the opportunity of working this part of Sol Sol Solinftec. 
working with Citriculture. Just to give you an overview of how Southern Tech is represented in the market today. Today we are the biggest market share in the agricultural um, market. Nine 95% of companies use Solinf Tax technology to use all the parts since the preparation of the soil and the mechanization in preparing grains, wheat, peanuts, cotton. We count more than 5 million hectares monitored with our technologies within the biggest producers even in Brazil and outside US, Latin America. We have an adoption, a big adoption of technology and for the coffee, orange, avoca avocado, and other cultures, we have our most new vertical in about three, almost four years now, 305,000 hectares that are using this kind of technology that we develop. We have a very nice DNA, which pretty much everybody who's there in front of the development in some part of their life, or they participated in one part of this Southern Tech as a client, or brought a proposal of bringing new solutions. So for this theme of sensors, it is important to put some simple concept in your head, which is the sensor, using sensors in agriculture, is putting inside our toolbox uh, uh, screwdriver that will be used and when we look at technology for this issue that I think all the speakers said about the evolution of the 4.0 5.0 something that we aim to reach having only sensors embedded on field for more lo long time more than 10 15 years we brought technology that wasn't br weren't bringing techno benefits they were bringing costs because we couldn't process and create intelligence with this uh, information because the sensors were working on field so this is an important concept i would like to leave here is there's not a proposal of everything wide in the, of use utilization if we only have one sensor on the field collecting data. I think today we had a, a nice speech with uh, humidity of soil, temperature, sensors of wet uh, leaves. If the client does that and make a, and, and uh, spray a fungicide and we have something there with lots of um, dew on the leaves and making this then there's nothing to do with what the sensor is giving me nothing happens so as we are in this vast area in brazil and latin america i brought some uh, some data for you to understand how the the orchards are developing this with regarding to the mechanization in brazil when we look at the operational quality and looking everything that we want as a minimal feasible as a well done with all the data that we monitor in the operation brings that using a technology that we developed to take a look at and in real time and not wait to happen 55 percent of all the operations they have some mistake on the rotation range that is being used in the speed that is being used if you look at the uh, mechanization system these are the two most basic pillars that we will assure you or the correct vision or the dimension or the wetting or the even though the expectancy of mm, the, I, I'm, I need more machines in my farm I need to invest more when you look at the efficacy of this equipment 65 percent of these equipments they are not working it means we, we look equipments that cost millions of reais and all these headcounts that comes together with the operation and 65% of the time that we should be doing something we are not. When we look to the supposition of failures, there are things that technology evolution brought to the pi automatic pilot light bar and we have the necessary for one operator to know what he's doing 17 percent of all the area and i'm talking about 100 hectare we have the overlapping or failure it is funny that the distribution of proportionality is half and half because that's where you have failures and where you generate a, a, an overlapping in other place when we look at the climate uh, conditions which is the script of all agronomists that goes to the field and that guy who goes to there and they they 
take something from the pocket to see the condition of the weather or they try to prioritize the stage of the day for them to apply something that makes sense 25 percent of this time of spray we ha we have the climate conditions that are extreme when we look to the waste seven percent of everything we had even the fuel consumption or it, when we are paying the time of that operator this is um idle when we have their zero production with only the energy consumption then for us to be able to understand this issue of the 4.0 solid tech designed the four pillars we use since the uh, super energetic and now to the robots issue that I will touch on. And this goes from a basic principle, which are the sensors on field for us to uh, acquire these data. But this acquisition, they cannot be done sporadically. They, I have an operation that started at 3 a.m. and when it's new, I still have this operation happening. And the data that I had at 8 a.m. will just arrive 5 p.m. If we have this level of information, this traffic of information with this big delay, we have a very serious problem happening. This, if you do something, a uh, fast remind, if you had contact in the farming every day, it's the same feeling of going to the to the plot and say, to the block and say, oh, I think people will work until 10 and 5 a.m. you go there and nothing was done and you have lots of problems. So this acquisition needs to go, needs to pass in a very simple way and use this communication in real time to put this to your point. We know that in Brazil, the big problem is telecommunication. This is not a problem which is solved for more than years and in years people cannot understand because there is a lack of support for us to understand in a short time. In 2014, they launched the first real-time communication only using Solinf Tech. They have this installed regarding the machine and they can transmit this data. This data. And we, we bring this data with a 4G of a low cost to use there. So we have 20 meters high tower. We propagate a um, wave of 4G based on Starlink, for example, which is very simple in your farm. 22 kilometers of distance of for this 4G for a private network, which there's nothing to do with the three big up, uh, providers we have and is not um, validated by Anatel. And when you look at that, you know you have the data, you know what is happening to your sprayer, your tractor, your operator, which opera what are the operations, all the climb networks he's communicating on the field. But how do, we, do I manage that? How do I put that to 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 have this added value where I need to have to, to have to have 10 15 20 headcounts so we needed a, a platform to manage everything so the tech look at all the four pillars we gather automation which is the last one linking all the chains I bring the data of the field, I show you what are the parameters, because everything will depend on parameters, even the agriculture. We put that very simple at the point of view that Mr. José, who produces in a farm 60 hectares of orange, he can use a technology that will bring a cost benefit. This technology needs to pay itself in a way, it needs to bring him a benefit. Many ways, depending on the level of this citriculture person and a person who works with 300, 350 machines online every day, it depends on how they communicate the data for you. Then we have this new stage of the fifth pillar, which is artificial intelligence. As we are a 15 years old company in the market, you imagine the size of data bank that each client of Solim Tech has since the beginning. We have lots of information stored there. And we understand each operational system of each machine, each operator who operated that, and they are generating information. Three years ago, Solent Tech creates this new sector, developing robots and artificial intelligence to start working with new sensors and with the bank that already existed and bringing this computational vision of machine learning and the creation of this algorithm for us to bring the platform. 
and look at the data that I have shown previously, what can I get when I look at those sensors in the field? or at this kind of uh, system. After a year, we know the climate, I understand the curve of normality for the favorable conditions. I've worked on the, on the qualification of my employees on the farm with good practices that will enable the use of the equipment. Then we have those numbers that is a reduction up to 80 percent out of this peri perimeter and when we look at the availability we have an improvement of 29 percent so everyone who has the experience on the farms you have probably seen uh, an employee going from one place to the other for, for example to the orchard block without any need and then the mechanical wearing will be worse and the only by adjust, adjusting this use adjusting the use of the equipment in the field we have this improvement here and when we look at the overlapping how how can we handle this how can an operator communicate to the other so when we close the cycle of the data we developed a technology that is able that regardless the brand it can be a yellow one a green one and they will be able to exchange information in that private net and they will i will be able to print in all the screens and tell them tell for example mr so that uh, he has already been here the other that he has been there. So every four or five seconds in real time, we can monitor that. And we are able to reduce the number. And it shows a very expressive number. When we look at the, the climate conditions, as we have the operation run, being run by an operator, the decision whether they will continue or not has to be respected because it's up to him. We train, we show the results, we show the, the research, but at the end of the day, if the person is tired, is worn out, if he thinks that he has to stop, okay, you will not be able to interfere. And once we can monitor the climate and give the parameters in real time as if you were there inside the machine telling him that he has to stop the operation and by showing him in case he doesn't respect this this perimeter perimeter that was created with you he will be demanded there will be a report showing that 25 percent of the area that uh, you wanted to leave this perimeter, it will cost me 400 hectares. There was uh, that uh, there was an expense that uh, shouldn't be there. We will use more and more power, and uh, this cost will not be good and when we leave this number that is that sh that seems to be small which is seven percent and we get to the one we can just for you to have an idea that we can reduce it 3.5 hours a day so this hour is the same as 10 liters so if you do the math times 30 times 12, you will see how much money you will be able to save. And by doing this, we will have a saving in productivity and also we will have a gain in sustainability. And bringing this scenario here and by bringing what we have mentioned here that's what we see inside the machine in different in different machines and they can 
see in the, in, on the screen inside the machine where they worked and if there was any place where they haven't been to. For example, here in the block 90, which is the green area, you see two red lines. The first is machine one, the other is machine two. The two traces in the middle are very common because maybe the trail was gone, then they had to fill in and they had to come back. And or there was a break not breakdown of the machine and then the other one had to cover this area that had been already done. You you have the experience in the citrus. It's impossible to look at the land and not notice that someone hasn't been there. So we can see if that area was worked or not. It's a kind of technology. So the difference between sensors and intelligence. And what gives you the information? Just for you to have an idea, when I capture the information to check if this is working or not, I can capture in many ways. It can be through the power, flow the flow chart, just a simple gauge. I can I can give you certainties regardless the worker is working or not. I can I can really check if that machine is working or not. As Jacques to brought here the timeline, we also have this. The usage of this new Citra culture that we've been showing here, now we can understand that this there is an open in the market where everybody is able to get in, to get into all the hardware development of any sensor. I go to China with by using the same component and I will find what I need developed in the lab, test in the field and bring it. Nothing would be worth it. It wouldn't bring economical return for what we need the most, that it will just stop if we will stop being pr uh, profitable. With this kind of intelligence, only sensors will not solve you what you need. And when we speak of this and combining the sensors again, how can we have this follow-up? We know that the, the, the range here, uh, I think that it would be your reality, but I can measure the time here. Is it possible to measure this? Imagine that inside an application in the Citra culture, where we have several ones, like every day through the whole year, 30 liters, 40 liters of errors due to uh, speed, or just because the operator is running it in a way it will cost you productivity, direct cost. It is costing you the head count because he's there every day working for you. And this machine solves all your problems. As long as I can go to the operator and tell him, please reduce the speed. And then you have to or do the opposite. In case we can't give the information, then the operation will not take any decision. So the intelligence will be based on what you call perimetrization. And uh, when we start analyzing, when we measure things, we understand the real importance of it. And some things that are very simple for you, for example, to work 2,000 rotations per minute. But if you work, for example, 90, 150, you would be able to change the longev longev longevity of this machine, and then it would reduce the liter of fuel, and then I will be able to increase my availability to be up to 80, and then we'll be able to dimension this operation. Okay. 
What about the climate? How can we have the parameter of it? You have had this leaflet of chemical products because they develop products that are not for what we need. The application can be only up to 25 degrees and uh, like the wind it has to be like this, like that. So if you are on the farm, you know that the operations that we have to face, it's impossible. But once we measure and start to characterize with three basic rates, which is good, medium, critical, I start having the idea of this application. And this parameter has to come from Solitech? No. The intelligence that I've been mentioning here is inside your minds. Those parameters have to come from you. They have to be according to your reality. So take a look here at the temperature, Only the first graph here. It's 100% of my index is in the idea is in the inside the ideal temperature. When I look at the humidity, relative humidity, so let's think of a product that will depend on the exchange of gases to absorb, to do the metabolism, then it will be around 65 and 70 percent of all the applications on a daily basis. They are out of the humidity conditions. And the critical can be up, can go 20, 18 percent. So you set up your par parameter. When I look at the wind speed, it's very good. What does it show in a condition that you have on the farm? If it's very hot, you feel in your skin, you say, oh, it's not a day to apply it. It's very windy. It's very easy. Look at the canopy of the plant and you see and, and you feel it. And what about the humidity? In this one, you can't feel it. You can have an idea, okay, it's a little bit muggy, but uh, we can't quantify how much it will be. Okay, and where is the intelligence here? If I know the geolocalization of everything, where people are, the machine that I've been using, the application, everything that I have shown here, I can inside my operational planning. 15 days of August, you have to pay attention because you we will have a problem. Only by doing this, the technology is bringing a benefit to you that is not only one. Actually, that's the benefit of questioning. The second one is to be able to, to spot yourself because you have to take care of the quantity of the products and many other things on a daily basis. And you have to plan and you have to go there and because you know that you will have a problem ahead. Imagine if it's something, it's an application that was linked to the psyllid, because we know that it's important to combat it. But when we look at this only solution that we have today, which is the chemical control, what am, what am I doing here? Am I helping or am I reducing the, the, the efficiency of my crop? And all of these we are able to create by like through intelligence in a, in a only platform. And by reading this, we from Solintech, we believe that we will start from those five pillars. And as the fifth pillar focusing on this event, those are the new versions of this robotic division. So here I have a history that he, three years ago, our president that was very intelligent, had a vision, and he said that, okay, we, we need to be into the operation. Regardless the culture, we need to create a 
a machine where we have to evaluate the, the structure of the plant, the presence of disease, of pests, and we have to do it in a safe way. And I have it to be, I have to align this between something cheap and safe, which is very difficult because it's it's very hard to put everything into a scale and be where we are. So just to present here on the left, that's the first drone that we have and this is the, it has eight cameras uh, sensors real sensors to be able to get to collect the pests the weeds basically the leaf damage that can be through an insect or a bacterial disease that can generate any kind of stress that will be there apparent on the side on the on the right side we have here the protagonist which is the version that is this Caltech version with this hunter solution as you see here I will talk deeper about it it's something that uh, we were able to do which is very important with Smundi Citrus to have this development of the citric culture here with your support by keeping all this development and it's and it's here in Brazil only in Brazil we have this sprayer robot that has been running in the in the United States in the United States in the second crop but for next year we will have 100 versions of this robot and also the hunter advance out of this grain and uh, caudal plants. So what do we, do we have here? The technology and intelligence come, come from here. When we look at the application, there is a project from Solin Fitec where we take those innovations to nurseries in the citric culture to bring a new development of application, thinking of the canopy of the plants, especially to control some specific things. What do you mean by that? All the recognition that we have by using the artificial intelligence is done by, it's, it's done by a comparison. When I find out that there is, I have a problem, and for example, what is the first step to develop here? There is a bank of images related to it, and then we have to create this data for the orange, for the apples, and we have, we have to teach to, in the trainings that we have uh, to understand the background, the culture, and now you will see how the camera works. It identifies the weeds in the fields. There are 30, 13 meters of bars. Each camera is composed by eight ones inside the bars. And it is able to detect the level of the spreading and the, taking the decision in real time. It, is, it also detects the time that was before and the time that will be afterward. And it's very easy to go on with in those new cultures. And inside that platform that you have seen, the chassis of it is 100% autonomous. I have just a remote control for support. But all the line the recognition, it is through the technology that we've been, we've been doing, we have developed it to identify the adjustments. And when we take a look at it, to nowadays we are able to create a new training with one thera of information every day. Just for you to have an idea, we have a very simple number that with 5,000 pictures, I can generate a new training and make sure that we have uh, this assertivity of 95%. So you, ha you see here the installed culture and the, the green point here is the manifestation of the weeds. And when we look at this platform and uh, here that's what the camera can do. The fa 
failures, the the growth of the grass, everything can be carried out here. The missions inside the field, uh, they, they, it chooses the orchard block where it will work on, if it has to go to one road, to the other. And the coolest thing here is that the comp computational intelligence is not in the cloud, it's in the robot, in the, in the robot. And the robot has an enormous number of information. And the delay that we had before between taking the decision and understanding what is going on, we are able to reduce it. The camera of the past has this training of a five, 500 theory of information. We haven't advanced yet, but for the soy, for the corn, for any kind of insects as a damage for the crops, they are here inside. This is one of the real pictures that was processed, processed by the robot and uh, by identifying the insects. So we have created new parameters to understand how this handling is carried out. Well, then for us to go into the end, I think the theme that interests a lot the city culture is the development of this platform. So basically, what we have done, we patented and developed an equipment which is able to transmit and radiate on on the field a long, longitude of lights, which goes from the visible and non-visible in different waves. This was embedded on a platform where I can direct on the field and say where it should go and or not which distance of each uh, place and how many, how long time it needs to be on on the field. So you mean, Brun, that you created a system of attraction? Yes. Yes, this wides of, this strength, that, uh, this weights, we created a partnership with Fundes Citrus where we have developed something that attracts the insects, only pests, and we remove the, the beneficial insects from there, like the like bees, for example, they are not attracted by the system. And how do you do that? Imagine that this ro this robot uh, gets many rackets of killing bugs and they have these lights on. It has an uh, internal electrification. The insect goes there and we eliminate this insect through a shock. So for issues regarding to citriculture with the partnerships we had done, we see, even through the size of the psyllid and the co behavior that we take into account in development using the polytomologic. There is another partnership with another company who, who can um, create this kind of glue and we are taking it to, to the grade here. It is not necessary, but we need a way of being able to count the insects inside. So it is a very simple equipment. It is not more. It's not heavier than 290 kilos in the field. It's 100% electrical. It it has a battery and solar panel. It uses the energy that it was loaded by the sun, and at night it interferes with the luminous threatenings. And as we see about the insects, this is something important to show that some. Everything we do, thinking about the, the species and attractions, we have a scientific basis. So, in the warm, we tried, we experimented during months inside with lights to understand the level of attraction, what time, what is the behavior, what is the level, of, for example, in a, in a cigarrinha, what is the size of the... What is the, the behavior in conditions of high humidity? and uh, the um, wings of the leaf hoppers are and we studied and we were based on the best surveys we had best professors in Brazil to generate that so in this stage of 2023 at the end of 23 and beginning of 24 this partnership was created together with Fonde Citrus to be able to do all the development of this technology to offer a solution in a short term to be able to be one of the helpers of you controlling the psyllid in what we have seen. I would like to 
Uh, thank you, Dr. Marcelo. He is a great partner seeking the idea of being able to develop that without looking if this is a company or not, but what the producer needs to develop. And these tests have already started inside Fundicitos in stage one, and next steps will be defined in the next meetings with the improvements and changes we have observed and we learned with in the first stage of tests in a closed environment and controlled room. Here, just to give you an example for you to have the real dimension of how this attraction happens. So, just for you to see how the leaf hoppers were, uh, are attracted and adult insects in the category of this, how its attraction, their attraction happens in this with these lights. So, we have touched on that a lot. The best result we got today was with the corn leaf hopper and one week we got the control of 62 percent of the population resistant population that was harming without using one drop of chemical defensive so during seven days with missions of six or eight hours of mission we could do all the methodology of counting the insects that were killed all the shocks and control and we controlled 62 percent of that population for you to have an idea when the map requires the register of a, a chemical redefensive in our legislation, this is the minimum of efficacy that 90% the market has validated in the chemical product to use in your crop. So that's the first time we have a technology that does not use a chemical defensive and use a technology to attract and eliminate insects, assuring a balance, especially of that person who that person who is va valuable for us like uh, a ladybug or a bee without interfering in their lives and just finishing here just to show you on how our robots they are streamers they trans they stream all the time with their working everything that is doing and the, the vision on the computer of them the ones that are in the field and what they are identifying each circle here in the IA is one beak and each uh, pink ball is one identified plant such as a weed if it's not sure it will check about seven meters seven times to define if it's a weed or not if it's not it's simply a corn plant that is not on the correct place we also can eliminate the opening of this beak and we got a number of 95 percent of reduction and 98% of accuracy identifying these uh, targets on field. Just to exemplify, this is the machine that is causing a big revolution in the producers in Brazil and US because here we started seeing that I need uh, a person protecting there, not a, a person covering me 24%. I don't need to get full of speed to assure a clean crop to assure an optimization of the work and the best conditions so guys I think that's it we had until we would have one time to finish but the message I would like to bring you with this new citriculture with this new sensors on field is that we have always aligned what is the intelligence what is the cost benefit for producer and what in fact will bring of impact to the citriculture with the use of these technologies thank you so much and once again it was a pleasure being here with you thank you so much bruno and with this lecture we finish this schedule of speech of lectures seen for the symposium of today we will have the round table now and i would like just to announce something to comment something while they set everything here and i want to say that in the afternoon we were concentrated on the on technology the theme was automation and we talked about automation we talked about artificial intelligence drones collector drones agro 4.0 I mean, several themes that involve high technology and how technology is helping field to develop. But it's very nice seeing as well that even thinking in the issue of technology, we, we, we keep talking about the human being that works on the field, that does the harvest, and they are not excluded completely in this process. 
of doing these two things walking together for you to be able to have a valorization of the, the man of the field making their work less exhaustive consequently having a result on productivity of plantation so it's very nice seeing that these two views can walk together so in saying that T he said here the change of of behavior of the cons consumer the consumer also influences obviously on the ways that the sector will take further in the challenges that they have to face according to market the all the challenges regarding to diseases and how to combat them you all have lots of work ahead I think this symposium collaborated a lot for you to be able to face these challenges with less uh, impact possible. So people are arranging everything here. I'm going to my pulpit to ask the questions and I will call back to the stage Efraim Albrecht, please. Thierry Lebriquer, Rodolfo Storar, Claudia Nasser, Ronaldo Sacomani, and Bruno Pavão. So let's get started here our round table, the debate about the themes you approached during this afternoon. Efraim, the first question is for you. It's from João Pedro. Considering the many challenges of the manual harvesting, where the producers need to prioritize to increase the yield of the harvest? Well, for in, in function of the works and visits we have done, in my point of view, the, we have to prioritize on the leader. It is a, a main piece considering the crop, the harvest. I, I think that seeking the, the, the collectors of high performance and somehow showing this to these leaders, they will be able to influence that people who are not very that didn't work so well and this is a priority to increase this year the focusing on the leader Rodolfo Storari Marcelo Marino asks you is there any impact on the next crop because of the fall of fruit of green fruits and flowers no, in the systems we use in the mechanized harvest, there's not an influence on the production. There's not a negative influence on the production of next year. Why? Because as we said, the window of harvesting we use a lot, but we do that before the plant already has a presence of flowers or that manifest themselves and we don't get to this point because if not if we had this harvest in this late moment yes we wouldn't have an influence of a uh, of the flowers with the fruits presence and we would have an, an, a decrease of the harvest of next year of next year even though lemon can have a compensation the effects on the harvest basically we note that in function of the intensity of pruning that we do on the plant, that's why we restrict a lot regarding to looking for architecture that maybe is necessary for the machinery and necessary plants for machines. I would say that probably we can do a, a lesser, a smaller pruning than necessary because we had a, an experience with a s severe pruning in the in. Uh, pruning the, the lemon will affect next year's harvest and it highlights a difference regarding to conventional prunings. Next question goes for Thierry and comes from Arthur Tomazeto. Is
Is there already any prototype of uh, picker of New Holland in test in Brazil? It's coming. Um, yes, I think if I don't say yes, I'm not saying the truth. We are testing in, in Brazil since a couple of years. Uh, we are trying to understand uh, the impact. Um, as, as I said, we have to be humble. We know, we know the challenges, we know the difficulties. Um, and every, every fruit um, has its own specificities. Uh, so we need to collect uh, experiences uh, field test, uh, and we are trying to improve year over year. So that, that's it. I cannot say more than this. Thank you so much. We have one more question for Rodolfo Storari, which also comes from Arthur Tomazetto, who has just asked Thierry, what is the wide of crown that the system of horseback of harvesting of lemon uh, supports stands? Can you please repeat the question? What is the the size of the plant and according to the harvest of lemon can stand? In our case, we work in the horseback system on plants of frying dragon as the 550 plants and normally the high of pruning we manage on these plants is approximately 2 meters and 80, we don't go over that. One more question for Rodolfo. Do you believe that with plants, and this comes from Sergio Nascimento, he asks, do you believe that with prepared plants for the machines, is it possible to repair the, the bottlenecks and repair the yield of the harvesting? Sí, absolutamente. Justamente ese, ese es el lineamiento que queremos Yes, yes, absolutely. That's what we want to initialize, giving a little bit of the work we had, because we didn't have the work at the principle of counting with this kind of plant. Exactly what, what I said, opportunity of improvement. It was learning with this, because we didn't have many options. And I believe that we can improve the efficiency of the harvesting, the harvest, of the machine if we work with plants and with a structure which is more adequate of the machines. Plants that are probably smaller, plants that are, if we work in um, long term in the nursery with higher rootstocks, grafting, and taking out the, the crown that does, doesn't need a severe pruning. I, I think the efficacy of the, the harvest will improve. There is something that I would like to say that 100% of the fruit, I think it's one percentage which is difficult to, to reach 100% of the harvest. Why? Because in fact of uh, in fact of lemon, for example, we were talking, we were saying that we can see the agents of transmission by the type of product we, we destiny to the lemon in the industry, the oil, which is the most va valuable we have for our industrial producer, there's a high concentration of all products that are going to be applied. So we have a very big limit in any at any time that there is one person authorized and registered and we can use the story of mechanization of harvesting it will change a lot thank you so much these were the questions that they were sent for us thank you so much for your participation and all your participation all the information you brought thank you so much for your presence all of you for this interaction this collaboration I will ask the speakers of the morning period come come up here to the stage to take a picture, please. Juliano Aires, Anato Bassanese, Eduardo Girardi, Inácio Iglesias, and Francisco Arenas. And while I talk, I thank you so much for your presence again. If you come, if you came from far to be here in this discussion, have a good uh, return home. 
we remember that this event was recorded. It's going to be available on YouTube channel of Funde Citrus. Share the registers of today. Follow our uh, social media. Have a good return and a good, a good rest. And thank you so much.